Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if broken Naruto becomes heatless and doesn't care about anyone part 1. Subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description. So let's begin the story. And lo, the heavens opened and he wept. His sorrowful crimson tears cleansing the world of those who did not deserve the gift of life. It hurt, it burrowed into his very soul, and brought more tears to the surface than even the oldest and most experienced shinobi, from gen into cage, had shed throughout time. The words cut deeper than any blade could ever dream of touching. The stares burrowed into him deeper than any drill. The whispers were like an assassin's blade, meant to hurt but merely silent as they came. His existence hurts, why couldn't he just cease to be? He had seen parents love their children, praise them and promise them things that would no doubt come true. When he was a child, where were these things when those around him got them so freely? He had nothing, no mother nor father to give him life and meaning. No brother or sister to give him advice and support. No family to give him love, all that was left to him was a name. His name hurts, why can't it be anything but Uzumaki Naruto? He had seen the strong be acknowledged for their strength or personality. He stood tall and proud, a full body mask covering head to toe hiding his pain thoroughly. He orchestrated some of the most elaborate and amazing pranks known to them, but the most that got him were curses and calls of demon child. This was better than nothing so he continued, hoping that maybe just once he would get something more than that. His heart hurts to beat why couldn't he just die? He would have laughed at the irony if he could, after all the death threats and wishes from the populace to die he just couldn't. He had taken a knife to chest and his throat, only to awake the next day with a scar and a whole lot of blood. He had done as many physical things to himself as they had done to his psyche, and yet he was still alive, in the physical sense that is. His life hurts. Why was it like lying on a bed of nails? So when the masked ninja burst into his room at night and stabbed him clean through the chest, all he could do was stare sadly and say, I've done it a thousand times before it won't work. The ninja was prosecuted and forced to quit by the Hokage who tried to reassure Naruto. He could only smile that goofy grin and say it was okay. It was a strange sort of revenge watching the ninja being led away with a ghostly white face and wide eyes, claiming the child was immortal. His soul hurts, why was it tainted so? The night must have been the final night, it must have been under the village's near unanimous boat. He awoke to the smell of ash and smoke, opening his eyes, he came to the realization that his world was indeed crashing down around him. Surrounding him were flames, they had devoured almost the entirety of his room, and were slowly crawling up along the sheets of his bed to his form. He smiled wryly, he hadn't tried this before, maybe it would work. He closed his eyes just as the flames touched the tips of his fingers, ready for them to burn to a crisp. Suddenly it all vanished. The heat, the smell of the smoke, the sounds of the roaring inferno, it had disappeared completely. In its place was a cold chill, the smell of water, the dripping of a fluid-filled pipe, the complete opposite of what had been. He opened his eyes to find that he was sitting on the bottom of a gigantic crimson pipe, water covered the ground all the way up to his waist. It took him a moment to realize the water was as cold as ice, so to remedy that he stood up earning the sloshing of the water and an unexpected growl from farther down the corridor. Looking around he figured, this must be death, not as cool as I thought. Dottie began a trudging march down the hall, his mask long gone as his face was locked in an emotionless stare. He was his true self, a child haunted and hunted by a village that hated the fact he was alive. A cold emotionless little boy who didn't know what love was but stopped himself from hatred, he only wanted to be known. It took him a while, a full half an hour, before he reached the end, and when he did he muttered, I didn't think there'd be this much walking when you're dead. You weren't dead, at least not yet snarled a voice from nowhere. Looking up he found that he had ended up before some gates, gates a couple miles tall and about a mile wide, with hundreds upon hundreds of somewhat thin bars and a paper declaring a seal over what looked like the lock. In a flash a massive clawed paw slammed into the bars, rattling the room, but they had just missed stabbing Naruto clear through his spiky blonde-haired head. Naruto didn't budge, he didn't even blink as he said, you missed Adi took one step forward and pressed his forehead to the massive claw that was just before his nose, causing a large cut to open up on his forehead. Suddenly the claw pulled back before Naruto could do more and from behind the bars, two massive blood-red orbs appeared, staring at him with a mixture of disgust and anger. You sicken me growled the creature while the bloody-headed Naruto smoothly replied, and you look like you were hit with the ugly tree when you were young, we share something in common. The creature growled and threw its body at the bars, only to be thrown back with a blast of blue chakra, if I could get out I would kill you afterwards. I would thank you Naruto said with a calm and even voice without any hesitation whatsoever. The creature snarled at the brat's seeming arrogance and attitude, you are weak, you can't even stand up to those who hate you. Why, should I care what you say hissed Naruto angrily, finally showing some emotion from the cheap shot the demon took on him. Seeing the somewhat satisfied look on the monster's face he produced his true self and commented, look at you held behind bars thinner than I am. What are you anyway? 
The creature produced a massive grin and let loose some killer intent attempting to scare the boy, but only succeeded in making him tap his foot in impatience, he had seen it all before so why would he care? The great beast chuckled and declared, I am the great Kaiubi no Kitsune, greatest of all Biju, and before you ask we are inside your body. That's right, I am sealed within a pathetic excuse for a human by its even more pathetic father, because no pathetic human can beat me. He expected many things from the human, most of it being surprised at all of the new information. However all he got from the now bloody-faced child was, you like the word pathetic don't you, you damned piece of demon shit. For all I care you can rot in me for all eternity as I die, that'll solve a lot of problems you dumb shit. Kaiubi stared wide-eyed at the foul-mouthed child with something other than hatred, it was pure confusion and surprise. Did he actually just call him that? No no way in hell would the great beast stand for it. Damn you child growled the beast as its body radiated crimson chakra that slowly seeped from its cage to the seal, attempting to snap it, as it had so many others in its blind rage. Naruto stared at what the demon was doing, and quickly figured out what was happening. Even if he was doomed to die by whatever the demon was doing at least it would be interesting to watch. He settled down cross-legged to watch the show causing the beast to grow even angrier. It was a mess, the streets littered with shinobi and civilians alike, screaming words of hatred and anger toward the now burning home. Many of the ninja and the crowd decided to take it one step higher and induce Katen along with some explosive notes to give a show to the public, the slaying of the demon could be entertainment also. There was sake being spread from shop owners to those present, they heightened the already elated mood, not that it was needed, but it was there. The shout soon brought company, overall unwanted, but at the time they already couldn't be stopped. In a flash a powerful wave of killer intent spread over the crowd, they turned to face a very, very furious Hokage. He hadn't even bothered to rid himself of his robes. He was staring down a couple hundred ninja and civilians in his pajamas, with an angered look that could only come from a demon, a demon like the one that they were burning. What in the hell do you think you're doing howled the Hokage, but suddenly his own rage was suppressed under something much, much more powerful. Naruto watched as the Kaiubi's chakra went to work dismantling the seal swiftly and with no tact at all, trusting the raw hate and power to protect him completely. What do you think now human snarled the Kaiubi with enough force to blow Naruto back just a bit, even though he didn't react, except for a small shift of his seating, quake in fear of my power Naruto, was silent for a few moments, then grinned a calm and even grin, well I would be scared if I didn't think you were going to die right now. Kaiubi's eyes shot open and watched its crimson chakra, the long tendrils that were picking at the seal, suddenly froze completely. The effect quickly spread through all of his chakra and eventually his form freezing him in place. Ayubi's eyes stared in horror as the crimson was slowly overcome with a pure white gleaming chakra that slithered up the tendrils and to Kaiubi's form, overcoming it completely in its pale grasp. Before it was completely swallowed by the white energy the Kaiubi gave a strangled scream of pain. Well Kaiubi this was fun Naruto said as he got to his feet, maybe I can finally G Naruto found himself incapable of speaking as a massive band of ghostly white chakra engulfed his head in its grasp, pulling him towards the cage. For once in his life he struggled against the most likely deadly force, from what he had heard from the Kaiubi he didn't want to die like that. The ninja stared in awe and horror as the blaze they had begun grew five times the size all by itself and took on a blood-red hue, becoming a beacon for nearly the entire ninja world with its raw energy. The sandane began to quake, feeling not only the chakra and power rising from the flames, but also the aura of utter hatred and death seeping from its crimson vapors. Suddenly a scream interrupted the stairs, and all watched as one of the crowd, a merchant who had refused Naruto's service on many occasions, and when he did give the starving boy service, he grossly overcharged him, pure and simple melted bone and all. They all watched as the crimson vapors of the flames landed upon his skin, and just like that his body began to melt with great pain, if the scream was any indication. That was all it took for the mob to run like the cowards they were, all that left was the old Hokage, as he watched the flames and crimson vapors grow larger and thicker. He was frozen by so many conflicting emotions all he could do was stare in horror, as the crimson mist flowed closer to him, wrapping around him with a good foot radius, isolating him without any way to escape. However as he watched the bloody mist close in on him he chuckled cynically, two hokages down by one demon. It was almost poetic then again he was getting on in years and seeing what the village had done to that poor boy. He guessed there was no more use for a man with a heart in Kanoha anymore, seeing as everyone else had either torn theirs out or sold it. Slowly the mist wrapped around Saratobi's form, but where it had melted the merchant had merely passed along his flesh, caressing his old and brittle bones with a power much more mysterious. He winced in surprise as he felt a warm wind pass through his body, the crimson mist passing through his flesh and blood, as if he were non-corporeal. He felt a tingling sensation in his palm, and he held up a hand to his face, as he watched his wrinkled old flesh begin to expand and become more elastic, taking a much more youthful appearance than what it had been. 
His eyes widened as he felt his hair grow longer, bangs covered his eyes gradually changing from gray at the tips to a deep rich brown closer to his head. He felt his joints lose, his muscles grow, his energy triple had he grown young. He heard a chuckle in his mind, it was low and deep, but with a touch of a tone he knew all too well, consider this a once in a lifetime gift Aji San. You're the only one who deserves anything like it. He looked all around for the source of the voice, but found none. Come and Aji San called the voice, my home is open to you, I only want a few words. Saratobi took a shaky step into the mist, but only felt that warm breeze caress him, so he continued on, going through the crimson flames, as if they were mere updrafts of warm air. Saratobi entered the heart of the blaze seeing the demolished building, however sitting in the very center was a bundle of blood red and pitch black. The Hokage took very careful steps over the demolished parts of the building, finding it much easier with his younger form, and found the crimson and black mass was a living breathing fox. The fox was a good five feet long even without the four tails, and while it was at the moment lying down, it had to stand about three feet tall or more. Its body was covered in blotches and stripes of crimson and raven black, coming to end at four black and red tails that waved casually behind him. In all it looked to be a good ten feet long from its nose to the tips of its tails. The fox suddenly turned his head to the sand aim, revealing its face and its eyes, one a haunting crimson, while the other was like looking into a dark well. There was no white at all, just a pitch black orb where a cerulean blue eye should have been. Above both eyes was a small mark of white going across his head like a hit I ate in his very body. Hey Aji San the fox spoke with that gruff voice that had invaded his mind only a few moments ago, so how do I look? Tsuritobi's mouth opened in shock, Naruto oh dear gods is that you the fox chuckled and began to shift, pulling its body from the ground to a standing position, revealing it was about 4 feet tall, yes it is Aji San. Kaiubi tried to escape but Kaiubi Siratobi shouted in surprise at the development of the fox, now named Naruto. Please don't do that Aji San Naruto said rubbing the side of his face with his paw, that really hurt my ears. I I'm sorry, Naruto Siratobi said with a worried look on his face. Naruto smiled the way only a fox can and spoke, it fell to the sea Aji San. Its body is now mine along with most of its memories and enough power to make me a foretail. It was too angry at me to take the time to work the seal off gradually and it backfired. I don't know what to say Naruto Sandame spoke over the flames, joy flooding his tone as tears spilled from his eyes. I have plenty to still say Naruto said, turning his head from Suratobi to his flames, the roaring inferno being reflected in his crimson eyes. I'm going to be leaving Naruto said, and before Suratobi could speak he held up a tail to stop him, they hated me for the beast, so what will they do when I really am one dot the Kaiubi was gone, but Suratobi was suddenly hit with the burden Naruto now truly carried. It was so much heavier than his last. Naruto chuckled sardonically, even though I'm powerful enough to crush any of them they'd still see me as nothing. Naruto turned to Suratobi with knowledgeable eyes, eyes of one who has seen true pain either through his own or the experiences of another, that is why I gave you the gift Aji San, your youth is yours for another couple decades. You're the only person I felt was ever close, you really are my family. Naruto grinned, I know my father sealed that monster in me, so can you fill in the gap Saratobi was shocked, but got over it swiftly, after what had happened recently he was used to these shocking turns, your mother she died from the combination of childbirth, stress, and an illness that could only be conceived in her family's blood. Naruto nodded slowly, that answers so much. Thank you Hokage-sama. Saratobi chuckled, it's Aji-san Naruto, good luck. Naruto bowed his head, thank you Aji-san. Be sure to take care of this village. I will be back to see how good of a job you did. Oh and let them think I died, it'll be fun to see them react. Naruto turned to the wall of flames that he had determined was his exit. In the blink of an eye he burst through the wall of flames creating a massive explosion, coupled with an earth-shaking shockwave that nearly knocked the Hokage down. Godspeed Naruto Sirotobi muttered finally feeling the effects of his reversed aging on his body, but I doubt you'll need it. The Kaiubi said the Hokage known worldwide as the professor for his knowledge of all Konoha, has been defeated. A chorus of cries and shouts rang throughout the village, those who were not in on the secret, only looked around in confusion, in other words, the children watched the confusing behavior of their parents. However said the Hokage the boy known as Yuzumaki Naruto is now dead. He was on the receiving end of many looks, an obvious duff from the adults, while well, the children were confused or just didn't care what Naruto had to do with it. The most they knew about him was that he was a kid just starting the academy, and he was damn annoying. This was the mentality shared by almost all except a young raven-haired boy and a wide-eyed little girl. Saratobi hung his head, seeing as the young child has passed I feel compelled to lift the law holding back the truth, all of the truth. Gasps were heard all around, and the Hokage spoke up, Yuzumaki Naruto was one of the greatest heroes of Konoha. He alone was the reason why Kaiubi no Kitsune was defeated. The child was the demon himself came a shout from the back of the group splitting it in two, revealing the two biggest clan heads, Ichihefugako and Hayuga Hiyashi side by side. 
The Hokage trembled, his now younger body giving off waves of power. He had yet to reveal his form, he had placed a thick many-layered Jinjutsu upon his form that was even beyond the Sharingan's piercing eye. How can you say that the Hokage hissed angrily, but Fugako and Hiyashi continued with twin shots of, the beast was the boy biding his time to kill us all we should rejoice both of their passing suddenly, they were both face to face with a very angry Hokage, you best hold your tongue before I cut it off. Uzumaki Naruto was a hero said the Hokage, his voice rising in volume, it was through his willpower and manipulation of the fox's rage that allowed him to kill the fox within his own body, at the expense of his own life. He, along with his father the Yande mind you, are the greatest heroes this village has ever known. This sent a shockwave through those gathered, the information they received was far too much to process all at once. A certain dark-haired little boy smirked, he knew there was something else to the blonde idiot than what was on the surface. He even noticed that there was just too much depth to be ignored, but he was now gone, and that made his smirk be replaced with a frown. Too bad. The young wide-eyed girl's eyes sparkled hearing the power the Hokage claimed the young boy had held. He was powerful, enough that her father had to recognize him as something other than an annoyance. Just as quickly her attitude fell, he had died in his quest to save the village just as his father had. No matter how powerful the family being dead was dead. No one noticed her pale violet eye dull just a bit. From this day on I shall recognize Uzumaki Naruto as a true hero the Hokage said, turning away from the stunned Ichiha and Hayuga leader, giving everything to protect this village, is what every leaf shinobi, especially the Hokage, does on a daily basis. I want to thank him for putting up with the hatred he faced in this village. The Hokage's tone took on something much darker, I hope that by the end of tonight, you will all realize that Naruto could have released the beast. By letting his guard drop and giving up all hope he could have let the monster back in this world, and nothing could have stopped it. Dot ignoring the shock exuded by the crowd he turned and began to walk, leaving the crowd to their own devices with his final words, I hope you realize that the one you should hate is the Kaiubi for killing the two greatest heroes this village has ever known. He took one look at the village, a small glance over his shoulder, before turning around with a grin so wide it could have swallowed the moon. He now had real power, thousands of years of knowledge that no human ever knew, wells of energy so deep he could barely see the bottom, an instructor in the form of a small five-tailed fox that held the last few eons of knowledge within his tiny figurative skull. He was strong now, stronger than the most seasoned Chunin and several Jounin. All he needed was time and maybe an accomplice. As time rolled on it saw many changes flow through the village. The academy grew dimmer, no annoying laugh or outrageous prank had been or ever would be pulled again. On the wall of the homeroom of one Yumi no Ruka, there was a small plaque with the picture of a smiling blonde-haired young boy. Below the picture of the Cheshire child it read, in memory of Yuzumaki Naruto. Son of the Yandame, may he rest in peace. In death he had gained more respect than he had ever commanded in life, many of those who once saw him as a monster, now saw him as the young boy who had toppled the giant, completing his father's work. They would bow their heads at the small ceremony held for the boy, and every year following when the anniversary of the boy's death would come around. There were those saying the monster still lived, laying low under the guise of death, but years later they recognized their mistake and begged forgiveness. There were no more secrets to be held in the village, everyone knew the boy's parents and what had been his condition. His father's enemies felt satisfaction when they heard his son had died without ever giving birth to an heir, so they ceased whatever vendetta they held, a victory was a victory no matter what the conditions. The village regretted their past actions, but there was no true way to apologize, they could only stew in their guilt as they felt a certain loss in their daily life. Aruka's class was dull, a few times soon after the child's death when a student was sleeping, he would accidentally call them Naruto, only to catch himself and hold back his tears. They were not only tears of sorrow, but regret, he too had treated the boy as the terrible monster, and not as the lonely student he also was at one point. That fact made him sick to his stomach with disgust directed solely upon himself. When the day came to allow the children to graduate he called them in one by one, letting those who passed walk through the door with a brand new Kanoha headband, there were no failures. The Kashi had become later than normal, using his excuses to cover up for his visiting of three graves, instead of just one. During each visit he would sigh and apologize to the two additional graves, telling them that he would never let something like this happen ever again. As long as he drew breath no child would suffer as Naruto had, as the son of the Yandame had. He would be four hours late instead of two, but in his mind did it really matter. Each and every Jounin of this new group of Genin watched their students grow exponentially during their first year and soon allowed them to enter the Chunin exams. This turned out to be a mistake of one of the highest calibers. While all nine of the rookie teams passed the forest of death they knew something was wrong with Ichiha Sasuke. Ichiha Itachi destroyed his entire clan, fleeing the village to join the Akatsuki under the guise of testing his limits. Ichiha Sasuke was forever traumatized, obsessed with the death of his brother, more than anything he trained and trained, but none were up to his desired level. 
No matter the skill he eventually found a way to humiliate them, and it began to sicken him. He wanted a challenge, a rival, a true test of his own power. He found that in the face of a grass genin, a clever ruse created by one Orochimaru to claim the boy's eyes for his own. Afterwards all Sasu could think about was the power the man named Orochimaru possessed, and the power he had granted him with a curse seal placed upon his neck. During the preliminary tournament the Hyugas fought, Niji easily trouncing the silent air to the point that she was near death she had no courage, no motivation and no confidence. The only reassurance she received were the half-hearted cheers from her teammates. Misguiding superficial support, they knew she couldn't win no matter how much luck she had or what miracles visited her. This was something she knew long before the fight began. Her already dim eyes grew even duller, and she fell into the role of a puppet, an emotionless machine that obeyed without question whatever training regiment or goal her father placed before her. She became stronger and in essence more ruthless, able to surpass her younger sister, and quickly gaining ground on her cousin in the short month after the preliminary fights. Despite this newfound strength she had no soul of her own, her dull white eyes spoke of the sadness of her heart, while her lips never moved except to eat and breathe. The black rings around her pale eyes expressed the fact she rarely slept, the training her father and the council gave her was too rigorous for sleep. No matter what her mental condition, her father and the council approved, if she couldn't be a good leader then at least she would make an excellent marionette. Niji still despised the main house, he hated Hinata, and how she allowed them to use her as their puppet, but no amount of hateful glares or words solved a thing. All she would do would look back at him with that irritating sorrow-filled gaze never speaking a single word. He would then challenge her to a match, something she would accept with a brief nod of her head. Each time he would win but he found it harder and harder to do each day. Sakura became more violent than ever before. She had no outlet for her rage, whether it be jokingly or seriously. This bent-up rage was bound to explode at one point, so when the match against her once best friend began she didn't waste time and carried it out with sickening precision and anger. Ino never saw it coming, it was doubtful if she would ever see it correctly again. Diba became too arrogant for his own good, falling victim to an attack that placed both him and Akamaru in the hospital for an undetermined amount of time. He lay on his hospital bed praying that Akamaru would live, he had taken the brunt of the strong blow for his foolish master. Kiba regretted it all and began to cry, praying for anything to save his canine friend. He received news the next day that Akamaru would recover, but they were uncertain if he would ever be the same. When the attack on Kanoha began many were so surprised they were left wide open when the Sun soldiers attacked their homes and civilians. The Kazakiage did have some powerful children, a Kanoichi who had control over the wind with her massive fan, while her brother commanded puppets that could have rivaled the infamous Akasuna, no Sasori in skill. Many knew the Kazakiage had one last son, but he had been missing for many years. Arachimaru ambushed the Hokage, feeling absolutely certain he would easily destroy this old shell of the man he once called master. The Hokage smirked at his student's arrogance and stupidity, he may have found a solution to death, but he was never too close with Yinjutsu. Dispelling his complex and powerful illusion he saw Orochimaru's already pale face blank, he felt it was time to fully punish his student for his transgressions against humanity. The Hokage walked away from the battle with deep cuts and such covering his body, along with numerous broken bones, but Orochimaru crawled away without a right arm and leg. He was lucky enough to escape Saratobi's renewed strength and skill, with a distraction concocted by his personal bodyguards. The Hokage quickly healed what he could and placed his Jinjutsu on as one would don a raincoat, it was time to aid the village as only the god of shinobi could. The sound and sand forces were repelled, it was quite easy when you had so many competent shinobi in one village, and you finally gained your bearings after one large cheap shot. However that didn't mean all was well, many had died in the invasion, severely cutting down Kanoha's resources and shinobi. Tsunade was gathered to aid in the village's reconstruction and training of the next generation. It took Jiraiya, Saratobi, and many other high-ranking ninja to physically drag her back, then convince her to stay. It didn't take that many words to convince Achiha Sasuke of their cause, the curse seal was working on him just like any good puppet master would their prized puppet. However while they were leading, then eventually carrying Sasuke from Kanoha to the border, they ran into some trouble they expected, and some they didn't. They did expect to be followed, but after the Jounin were tailed by Jenin, they felt just a bit insulted. Jiraobu was the first to stay behind, using his Dome of Earth to feed off the chakra of their opponents. Hidemaru was the next to fight, apparently Jiraobu was too weak and he needed to fight. He let the other two go and face the group, taunting them with his skill and intelligence. In a moment of arrogance he accidentally allowed the others to pass by while facing the wide-eyed Hayuga. He grinned maniacally to himself as he activated his curse seal to its second level, this was as good as over. Seiken and Teiya were next, battling the bug user and the genius respectively. Seiken and Yukin found fighting the bug user was much more difficult than they thought. Since his bugs could devour chakra and they knew the difference between the master's chakra and an invading source, they couldn't destroy his body from the inside out. 
that left only pure force and power at their disposal, something that at their second level curse seal they had in spades. They Aya saw Kimimro take the barrel from the genius and the spandex wearing freak easily, claiming he was the closest to Orochimaru's dream, seeing as he was moving on pure willpower alone. He pet the barrel caringly and said that the container held an even more important part of that vision. Like that he was off with the green freak following leaving Teaya to battle the genius, something she was sure that her spirit demons would have no problem with. They watched a battle rage on between the green freak and the bone user, the bone user was strong, but so was the green freak. When he let his weights go they watched the bone freak be bounced around as though he was a toy, the speed that the green being possessed was outclassing the white-haired bone user easily. Suddenly they saw the Bone Freak's shirt fall, and he revealed a curse seal, it spread over his body, and soon he was moving at the speed of the Green Beast, matching him blow for blow with his own dances as he liked to call them. The Green Freak was being worn out, his body being pushed to the limit to battle this beast. Without warning the barrel that the Bone user had held began to smoke, emitting a thick purple mist that unnerved the green one and made the Bone user smirk. Seconds later the container exploded in a shower of wood and paper offering to the world a Sasu transformed by his own level 2 curse seal burning away his chakra and free will. The Ichiha smirked and clenched his fist, feeling the raw power flow through him before he turned and became a blur of speed. Suddenly the taller of the two chuckled and said, would you be so kind as to help the green guy, I think he's about to die. I'll go fetch the runner. The second nodded, as you wish Nobu sama. Oh, please, the being laughed lightly. You know by now to call me Nobu san. With that, they both vanished, one in a raven black blur, while the other was clouded in a whirlwind of sand. Lee was kneeling on the ground, panting and wincing, as with every pulse of his blood rose a new pain into his already battered and crushed form. He stared in awe and anger as the bone freak easily stood up, he looked as though he wasn't in any pain whatsoever, as he took a few steps toward Lee. He held up his fingers and said in that calm voice, Teshi Senden dot from his fingers came his distal phalange bones, flying and spinning towards Lee's head. He sighed and thought, this is it. I have to use that move he concentrated, feeling deep within himself for the doors that would release his body's stores of chakra. Before he could open those massive gates an immense wall of something flew in front of him and intercepted the bullets stopping them in their tracks, despite their added drilling attribute. Lee's head spun around and he viewed something he would never forget. Standing behind him with crossed arms was a shinobi youth, no older than himself he was guessing. The boy was wearing a wide-brimmed hat that covered his head in a shadow light enough to be seen through. His eyes were a light emerald, while his shoulder-length hair was the color of freshly spilled blood, and just above his left eye was a tattoo of the word love. He was garbed in a long-sleeved floor-length deep crimson coat, giving off a dark and vaguely sinister look about him. Wrapped around his waist and over his shoulder were a pair of tanned leather sashes, they held a massive beige gourd onto his back. Under the coat he wore normal ninja armor, but what was unique was the long string with metal tags he wore around his neck, the seals imprinted in the metal, were the most complex Lee had ever seen in his life. It was the same condition with his gourd however there was only one enormous complex seal on the top bulge, and it was quite a bit different than the others. The ninja wore long black pants and high top black sandals that concealed his legs entirely. On the strap of his gourd was a hit I ate that portrayed a fox's head with a small mark on its brow. Who are you Lee asked with wide eyes, staring at this being that simply radiated a chakra so dark and ominous that it made his stomach turn. I am known as Abaku no Garagara said as his sand wall lifted, revealing the level 2 seal Kamimro in all his quiet rage, and if you value your life, you will allow me to kill this man. I have been given orders and I intend to follow them. Sasu grinned wickedly, his madness growing by leaps and bounds with each moment the second level curse seal was in effect. He finally had the power he wanted, he finally had what he needed to defeat that monster of a brother. He finally had a village of fighters strong enough to give him a challenge. He finally had a true master that would make him grow. He winced in pain and came to a stop feeling the seal on his neck burn. He looked at his hand and saw the darkness of his skin fade, and the black flames return only to begin shrinking, the seal had returned to low level 1. Sasu thought for a moment then shrugged, he supposed it wasn't anything too major. He could always return to that second level state, since he already knew the path. After all, would he truly need to walk around flaunting that power constantly? Well yes, but he could figure that out when he came to it. With those thoughts he continued at a somewhat slower but overall fast pace toward the border. When he reached what was known worldwide as the Valley of the End, he saw something that he did not expect. Seated a few feet from the edge of the chasm was a figure, his entire body was shrouded in mystery, and his head was covered with a large wide-brimmed kasa that had white papers covering the rest of his face and hair. Sasuke snorted at the beginning, he didn't know what his game was, but he didn't really care. He was strong enough that if the being decided to be stupid and try to stop him, he could easily overpower him. Feeling Balsi at the moment had walked right out of the woods intent on passing by the figure without even acknowledging his existence, as is the arrogance of madness and the madness of arrogance. 
they seemed to march past the being, not even getting nor giving a word to the seated figure, who seemed to stare out into the nothingness through the paper of the kasa. Sasuke scoffed and examined his route, deciding that the chasm was the quickest path to his power he was about to leap down, until he heard a voice, low and gruff, but with a vaguely friendly edge to it, so a curse seal ha. Huh? Biddy, I was thinking you were strong for a minute, but you're just a weakling avenger. Sasuke grit his teeth and forced the seal to spread farther, getting closer to the second level, as he turned to face the cloaked person, who the hell do you think you are? The being sighed and said, I've got a lot of names, but you can call me, Nobusama. Sasuke growled and formed a few hand seals, creating the Chidori in his left palm as he said, I call no one Sama. The only one who deserves respect is me. Sasuke vanished in a blur, his Sharingan eyes blazing with but only two, as he charged the seated being with amazing speed. The man known as Nobu sighed as he rolled his neck, allowing a few cracks to pierce whatever air was not being taken up by the chirping of a thousand birds, superiority complexes. Sasuke reared back his left hand and with all of his strength thrust the Chidori towards the heart of the seated man. When the explosion cleared there was a massive crater in the ground, seated next to it was Nobu with his hand holding Sasuke's wrist, and thus hand to the edge of the crater. Sasuke gritted his teeth and saw Nobu's hand on his wrist, a tan-skinned hand with claw-like fingernails. I like the spunk Nobu said as he slowly stood revealing his height to be a few inches taller than Sasuke, but the attitude has to go. Sasuke growled and pushed his chakra higher, forcing his body to morph into the hideous form of level 2 activation. Sasuke violently pulled his hand away and leapt back, forcing two hand-like wings to sprout from his back he began to hover. Instead of turning and fleeing for the land of sound his anger won out, and just as he had before he began to form a Chidori in his palm. I'll kill you nonsense growled. Sasuke as in his palm formed a darker and even more powerful assassination weapon, roaring with the sound of a thousand birds. Over the sounds of bird, over the beat of his wings, over the sound of his blood rushing through his ears, he heard Nobu whisper. He left a lot to be desired. Sasuke growled in fury and sped forward, his hand like wings beating furiously attempting to gain speed in the vicious freefall. Nobu smirked behind his kasa and held out his hand, allowing Sasuke to watch with his activated Sharingan, as wisps of crimson and midnight black chakra were emitted from his opponent's open palm. Sasuke stared in rage and disturbed amazement as the mist-like chakra gathered into a sphere in Nobu's hand, creating a ball of pure black with only faint stripes of red here and there. Kujeki Tama. Sasuke growled and forged ahead, plunging the Chidori into battle with a pitch black ball, but no matter how hard he pushed the ball didn't move, not in the least. Nobu chuckled low in his throat, do you even know what a void does? It sucks up everything and anything close to it now who's touching it Sasuke's eyes opened wide, and he saw what Nobu was talking about. The darkness Chidori, his most powerful, that had once flowed around his arm, was now reduced to a small glow that his hand held. Then the blink of an eye even that vanished leaving him with his palm resting on the inky black ball. Seeing his greatest defense being dispelled so easily he attempted to flee but found his hand was stuck, he couldn't pull it back even the slightest distance from the dark orb. He hissed in pain as the color of his skin drained, and his body shifted forms against his will, the darkness of his level 2 fleeing his form, and being absorbed by the dark ball. The black flames that now covered his body, succumbed to the same fate, being pulled into the void sphere with excruciating pain, earning a loud piercing scream from the throat of Sasuke. At last Sasuke was back to his normal form, but he was still screaming in agonizing pain, as the curse seal moved from his neck to his arm, and eventually his palm. A sickening crack was heard as the mark reached his palm, breaking from his skin, and being pulled into the black ball he gripped in his open hand. When it was all over he was just barely standing, his limp hand sliding off the orb, seeing as it had gotten what it wanted. It wasn't long before he collapsed, having nearly all of his chakra pulled from him, along with having the curse seal torn from his body, and soul was too much for him to handle. Nobu chuckled and looked at his ball of pitch black, feeling the information of the heaven curse seal, and the young ninja he just defeated flowed directly into his mind, before the orb dispersed in a mist of black vapor. Ichiha Sasuke Nobu said, turning to face the fallen boy, this will be very interesting. Nobu bent down and hoisted the boy up onto his shoulder, turning from the sound to Konoha with a slow and even walking pace. Sasuke made no movements other than soft breathing and occasional twitching, Nobu began to hum a little tune to pass the time. Ara stood above the field of bone spikes, with Lee kneeling next to him, before the pair was Kamimura ready to strike, but his body had just given out on him, the exact moment he was to deliver the killing blow to Gara. He now stood as a statue, his face holding not the look of a killer, but of something far more tortured. Lee started in fear at the beast that Kamimuro had become, but he questioned Gara's sanity as he got closer to the body, looking into the eyes of the dead titan, before clasping his hands in prayer and bowing his head, rest in peace Kamimuro-san. Gara reached out with one hand and slid it over Kamimuro's eyes, closing them for good. Lee looked up to Gara in confusion while Gara merely said, him and I are similar. 
he fought for someone who saved him from loneliness, but his attachment was misguided as was the man he chose to follow. I wish him only peace in the afterlife, still it would be far better for him to rot in the bowels of hell than to live the life he had under the man he fought for. Arasan called a voice from the edge of the bone field. Both heads turned to see the cloak being holding Sasuke laughing loudly and said, spouting off another one of your sermons. Can't I leave you alone for five minutes without you going off about that Gara? Ground, but before he could argue back Lee shouted in surprise, while pointing at the body draped over Nobu's shoulder, it's just Sasuke. How did you get him? The being looked at Lee then chuckled, introductions first Midori Rosan. May I ask what your name is Lee was shaken but said, Rock Lee. The being smiled and said, Well Rock Lee, I'm guessing you came from Kanoha correct Lee nodded slowly, we received a five-man mission to retrieve Ichiha Sasuke, and I made a personal promise to bring him back. The being nodded, well if Gara san would be so kind as to get me on one of his flying dirt clots, then we can be back in no time at all right Gara san. Gara rolled his eyes and said, as you wish Nobusama. The being groaned as a thin layer of sand lifted him off the ground until it became thick enough to easily stand upon, it's Nobu San Gara, San. Gara chuckled, and they were off, flying across the land at an alarming pace for flying chunks of crushed rock. Lee was severely confused at this turn of events, but thankfully exhaustion hit, and he passed out upon the flying bed of sand he shared with Gara. The procession into Kanoha was an odd one to say the least. Even though there were not that many ninja awaiting the arrival of the rescue team, those who were we were incredibly worried. Sakura was at the head of the group, her hands clasped in prayer for Sasuke and for Lee, who had made the promise of a lifetime to retrieve the Ichiha. Behind her was Kiba, holding on to Akamaru who was still nursing his injuries, but was as curious as his master was about what had befallen their friend Shino. Standing beside him was Hayuga Hinata, her dull black ringed by Akigen staring out into the world beyond the gates in an attempt to catch some glimpse of the team. She had come here on request by Kiba, he hoped that her by Akugan would be enough to spot hospital level trouble if it was coming. Standing at the gates but far away from Sakura was Ino, praying for her teammate's return, but warily eyeing Sakura every few moments. Her right eye was bandaged while her left still had a bright shiner around it. Tenten was beside Ino wishing the same thing for her teammates, Niji and Lee better pull through or when they were reincarnated, she would kill them. Suddenly Hinata shifted which Kiba caught in his peripheral vision. He turned to her with a questioning glance, is it them or is it trouble with a simple hand gesture Kiba grinned wide and said, hey guys. Hinata says they're back those who had been in a somewhat relaxed position, jumped up and prepared to receive the heroes. First through the gate was something very unexpected. First came a small round orb that resembled a floating eyeball, and behind it, resting on a bed of what looked to be flying sand, was Niji and Chaoji. Chaoji looked deathly thin, and Niji looked like he had been used as a pincushion for kunai and arrows. Limping in behind the severely injured were Shikamaru and Shino, Shino was leaning on Shikamaru using him as a crutch as he walked slowly and with a prominent limp. The next one through the gates was a boy, later known as Gara, carrying Lee over his shoulder, since his gourd was still on his back. One of his eyes was closed, but suddenly the ball of sand collapsed, and he opened his remaining emerald orb to the world. Lastly was the cloak and kasa covered being, eventually called Nobu, with Sasuke on his back sleeping peacefully. Lee was beaten and battered, but he looked much better than either Niji or Chaoji, those two being taken by their teammates to the hospital immediately after being received. After the two teams had left Shino was pulled away by Kiba, leaving Hinata to give Nobu a dull wide-eyed stare, before following her teammate silently. In the action Tenten had grabbed Lee, but Ino had forgotten Shikamaru, leaving him with the secondary heroes Nobu and Gara, and the fangirl Sakura. An all-only Gara, Shikamaru, Nobu, Sasuke, and Sakura remained. Nobu chuckled and pulled the sleeping Sasuke from his back, holding him out to Sakura with an odd voice, I think this belongs to you. Lee Sen went through a lot, but I can say he kept his promise. Sakura accepted the Ichiha air looking him over, only to find that he just had severe chakra exhaustion, along with some minor bruises. She turned her head up and looked at Nobu who smirked behind his kasa and said, you might want to get him to the hospital with the others, total chakra exhaustion can be deadly. Sakura nodded and turned on her heel, racing off with Sasuke in her arms, leaving only Gara, Shikamaru, and Nobu there. Shikamaru glanced between the two and decided to speak up, I don't really care, but who are you, and why did you help Nobu looked at Gara who nodded and said, I am Sabaku no Gara. Nobu turned to Shikamaru and spoke, and I'm called Nobu, and before I answer your other question mind taking us to the Hokage. Shikamaru stared at the two for a moment, then nodded, come with me, I can put off healing a broken finger for now how troublesome. He had been engrossed in his paperwork ever since he learned about Ichiha Sasuke's apparent affection from Kanoha to the sound. The constant meaningless tasks were the only things that could take his mind off the events that had been happening. Apparently Orochimaru placed one of his curse seals on the boy, and now due to the dark influence the seal had on his mind and soul, he had gone to Orochimaru for power. 
To make matters worse, due to the invasion that Orochimaru had orchestrated, they had a shortage of ninja. Taking that into account with the property damage and the many other problems that had been surfacing in Konoha, he was getting severely overworked. Even if he did have a younger body than his Jinjutsu showed it was very taxing on him and his energy. He was not in the mood to be ticked off right now, but apparently the fates were against him in even that respect. Like an explosion his doors were slammed open revealing a cloaked figure with a wide-brimmed kasa, his arms were out, showing he was the one that had opened the door. Behind him stood a young man, which he would later learn was Sabaku no Gara, rolling his eyes at the cloak being foolishness. Lastly there was a familiar face, Nara Shikamaru, his face betraying his bored outlook on life, as it was freely showing his shock at the cloak being's behavior. The cloak man walked up to his desk, as casual as if he had been in charge, and said, What's up Hokage-sama, here you're doing a bang up job. Here dot the Hokage grit his teeth and said in a forced calm tone, Whoever you are, get out, now dot the cloaked figure only laughed and said, Aji san you should really watch who you're talking to. The Hokage was close, ready to jump up and destroy the cloaked figure, that was until he grabbed his hat and pulled it from his head. Suritobi nearly had a heart attack. Suritobi stared in amazement, and his jaw could only hang as he said, Naruto. Standing before Suritobi was that goofy smiling Naruto that he remembered from so long ago. His canines had grown longer, but it was still the same wild grin. However his face looked older, more mature and sculpted than the few years he had been gone could cause. His grin lessened revealing that one crimson slit pupil eye but the other, the right, was hidden behind a black headband that he had tilted to the side. The cheek marks that had become his trademark became thicker and more noticeable than before. Inspecting more of Naruto's features he noticed that Naruto's hair was no longer a brilliant golden yellow. Not unlike the kitsune he met in that burning home, Naruto's hair was a mixture of jet black and bloody crimson, creating a very interesting combination. His hair was shoulder length and had even wilder spikes, if he could see over Naruto's shoulder behind his neck, he would have seen the low ponytail that vanished into the collar of his cloak. On the sides of Naruto's head were his ears, slightly elongated to a point and covered with a thin layer of black and red fur that made him look almost feral if he weren't grinning like a moron. Oh by the gods it is you Suritobi said in joy as he stood and walked around to the side of his desk holding out his arms to the boy. Naruto nearly jumped into the seemingly old man's arms giving a strong hug, it's good to see you Aji Sandad I hate to interrupt, but what is going on Rose Shikamaru's voice, he tried to hide his surprise, but all it made him do was crack his tone. Ara smirked and closed his eyes as he bowed his head, it's a reunion if I ever saw one. Shikamaru was about to say something, but the Hokage spoke, Shikamaru can you close the door. If anyone is going to know, I think it would be best if you did. Gara's head snapped to face Naruto with questioning eyes, but Naruto only smirked and nodded, it's no problem Gara-san, he may stay. Shikamaru closed the doors while Suritobi cast a secret, allowing only those present in the room at the moment to hear the conversation. Shikamaru joined the others, not really ready for the fear he was about to get. Suritobi explained the whole story, from beginning to end of who and what Uzumaki Naruto, now going by the name Kuajeki Nobu, truly was. Shikamaru was stunned for the fourth time today, he never knew, but then again with what little clues were dropped, he wasn't really surprised in the grand scheme of things. Saratobi finished with a smile, donning his Jinjutsu once again, seeing as he dispelled it once during the story to illustrate the truth of his tale. So what do you think of me Nara San Naruto questioned as he sat in a chair by the side of the Hokage's desk. Shikamaru stared into space for a bit before he put his fingers, broken and non, together in his trademark thinking position. What kind of hand seal is that questioned Gara, who was leaning on the wall of the room. That's not a hand seal Suritobi said solemnly, that's an indication that he is taking this a bit harder than I had hoped. Moments later, Shikamaru's eyes snapped open and he said, I've run it through several hundred times in my head. He gave a light smile, it is nice to finally meet a hero of Konoha, even though it is under these troublesome conditions. Naruto grinned and said, Hero of Konoha, never been called that before, but it feels good. It's been a pleasure meeting you Narasan, possibly we can be friends in the future, but right now I think you'll need this. Naruto vanished in a blur and reappeared in front of Shikamaru, grabbing his injured hand with his own, that glowed with a crimson flame. Shikamaru was amazed and frightened, but when he felt no pain from the hand clutching his own he decided to watch. He watched as his broken finger snapped again with an audible crack, but he felt no pain. He could see the bone moving back into place, but his hand was numb save for the slightly warm breezy feel that seemed to pass through his flesh rather than over it. In time Naruto let Shikamaru's hand go and said, there you go Narasan. Hands all better. Shikamaru lifted the uninjured limb to his eye and inspected it, finding no trace of even so much as a scratch he nodded and said, I think it would be far too troublesome and idiotic to ever get on your bad side Yuzumaki-san. Naruto smirked, that's not for public use, that goes for you too Aji-san. 
My name in this village will be Kuijeki Nobu until I think they deserve to know the truth. The Hokage nodded and dismissed Shikamaru while Gar excused himself, he wanted to use the bathroom and allow the boy and his grandfather to reunite after so long. So how have you been Aji San Naruto asked with a bright smile making Sirotobi chuckle, fine and yourself. Naruto grinned and said, well I can safely say that this will be popular very soon. Naruto then pulled from his cloak a small hit I ate, on its metal plate was the outline of a fox head with a small mark on the forehead. Naruto, what is that Sirotobi asked pointedly as he indicated the cloth and metal band with an extended index finger. Naruto laughed lightly and said, I'm not trying to start a village if that's what you think. It's for me to recognize my subordinates. Sirotobi twisted up his face in confusion, subordinates, is that what you've been doing? Naruto grinned, and without warning his cloak fell from his shoulders, finally revealing his body in its entirety. Just as Gara was he was garbed in a floor-length coat, but instead of a deep red it was a pitch black with tears at the bottom so ragged and wild, it gave the impression of black flames flowing from the bottom of his coat. Under the coat Naruto wore a crimson shirt with steel fishnet underneath, and around his neck, he wore a necklace with small metal plates, each one holding a seal identical to the ones on Gara's own metal plates. Naruto's pants were similar to Gara's, but his sandals were not as high leaving a small amount of his leg showing. Around Naruto's waist was a wide belt of black and red fur, he guessed Naruto made it himself seeing as it was in Naruto's color scheme. Going across Naruto's chest from right shoulder to the left side of his hip was a wide crimson leather strap, with smaller minor straps going over his left shoulder for extra support. The thick strap of colored hide was special in the fact that it had small pockets and pouches along the front, and attached to the back was a sword in a crimson sheath, a fact Sirotobi found odd, since Naruto's cloak gave no indication of a weapon. The oddest part was that the sword couldn't be any longer than three and a half feet long, the blade in the sheath most likely being two and a half, while the leather wrapped handle was fully one. Why was such a large strap needed for that size of a sword? Naruto noticed Sirotobi's stares and chuckled, seeming to read Sirotobi's mind, the cloak is special, in that it never shows if the person wearing it has something large, underneath. Naruto smirked and turned around, revealing a few things that nearly made Sirotobi have another heart attack, like these. Waving from Naruto's backside were six somewhat large and obviously dexterous fox tails, each one colored a mixture of black and red like Naruto's hair. The tails twisted and waved behind Naruto, apparently showing off for the old man before they fell into a formation and lined up looking like almost one gigantic tail welded together from the six individuals. Looking up to Naruto, Sirotobi finally saw the low ponytail Naruto had hidden inside of his cloak. The tail itself was down to almost the base of his foxtail, it was the same mixed color of his hair obviously, but was covered from the starting point on his head to 5 inches down, with tightly wrapped black bandages. The ponytail, when wrapped in the bandages, was a good inch or so diameter and flared out towards his tails. As Naruto turned around Sirotobi watched in amazement as the belt that Naruto had worn reappeared, his giant six tails turned one wrapping around his waist to form the wide yet surprisingly thin strap. He didn't know when Naruto had unraveled those tails, but if an enemy wasn't put off by Naruto's shows of outward appearance and obvious power, then those tails would easily do the trick. I can't think of a thing to say to Naruto Sarutobi said with a look reminiscent of a grandfather's proud smile, you certainly have changed. Naruto chuckled as he decided to take a seat, sitting comfortably even with the sword on his back, I've heard you've done the same. Beating Orochimaru until he only had one arm and leg. Tisk, tisk, Hokage-sama. I thought you were a peaceful man. Sirotobi gave off a shit-eating grin as he sat, well what can I say? He was arrogant enough to think he could beat an old coot like me. You should have seen his face when I lifted the Jinjutsu. Naruto snapped his fingers, damn I wish you had a camera. Naruto shrugged, oh well the time for that is past. Personally I'd love to see his face when he learns his curse seal is gone. What do you mean Sirotobi said with hope flooding his tone and a sparkle in his eyes, gone Naruto. Grinned and held up his palm, effortlessly forming his Kuijeki Tama without a second thought, I call it Kuijeki Tama. Sirotobi stared at the ball much as a professor would at his student's final exam, what exactly does it do Naruto sighed, he thought the man was a genius, but then again, this was something unique to him and him alone. He had to cut the man some slack, tell me Aji-san what does a void do Sirotobi, only needed a few seconds of thought before he sagely replied, it devours anything and everything that comes within its reach pulling it into a mysterious oblivion. Naruto nodded, exactly. This little wonder eats whatever chakra or special seals and drugs the victim has used, and in turn I learn everything about it. I can safely say that I know everything there is to know about the heaven seal and Ichiha Sasuke. Too bad I have to stare at it to the ground when I use it, or it could eat my chakra and knowledge without touching the opponent. 
Saratobi was silent for a long time making Naruto worry just a bit until he grinned and said, so are you going to explain these subordinates or am I going to have to treat you to Raymond first? Ara stood outside the office for quite a while, an hour or so, willing himself to not listen to the sounds coming from the office of the Hokage. For the first half hour he had found conversation with the Anbu guards, a man and woman, stationed outside the doors. They were somewhat kind and very curious about who Gara was. However, anything referring to Nobu he refused to disclose. After the short discussion it was complete silence and he was getting impatient. Instead of losing his mind by holding himself back from listening to the conversation, he focused on his mission and objectives as given to him by Nobu. They were complex and to a point irritatingly tedious, but he was sure it wouldn't be hard. Nothing could override these orders, except for Nobu's own contradicting words. The while into mulling these thoughts through in his mind a voice interrupted him, Gara-san. He turned his head to view Naruto's smirking face, Naruto decided he no longer had a use for his cloak and kasa, while Gara rather liked the shade his hat provided. Naruto's smirk was still present as he spoke, we are now part of Konoha. Gara nodded, he suspected as much, what team will we be on Nobu Sama Naruto sighed, both at the use of Sama and what he was going to have to say, Gara we will not be on a team together. Gara's face was emotionless, he knew Nobu's jokes all too well, and at times they were just not funny. It took a moment, but when he realized this was no joke his eyes widened slightly in shock and puzzlement, Nobu-sama I don't understand. Naruto gave Gara an apologetic smirk as he whispered far below human hearing, Gara said I need eyes on the outside, on a different part of the ladder to go out and make contact with the net, the Kitsune and Tanuki have laid. Gara frowned but bowed and spoke with a slightly saddened tone, as you wish Nobu-sama. Naruto sighed and placed a hand on his shoulder, causing his head to snap up, hey, don't think we're never going to see each other my friend. Kind of hard when we're going to share the same bathroom don't you think Gara queried an eyebrow, will we be living together? Naruto smirked wide, allowing his elongated canines to show, Siratobi got hold of his modest estate for me, it should be more than enough room for all four of us. This statement raised questions in the two Anbu guards, who vowed to find out more lately. Gara's face was emotionless for a moment until he cracked a small grin, so who are your teammates Naruto chuckled, remember that lovely batch that met us at the gates, it was quite a solemn attitude in the Kanoha hospital, so many gen and locked within its sterile and whitewashed walls, smelling of blood and medicine. To anyone it was sickeningly ironic that this was supposed to be an institution of healing, yet it could make one ill with the smells alone. It didn't help knowing that one of their own was teetering on the very edge of death as they themselves recovered. Akamichi Chaoji was beyond critical, he was pretty much on his deathbed when the medics, headed by the great Tsunade herself, went to work on him. It had been hours since Chaoji vanished through those operating doors, and yet no word had been sent out, the red light still glared at them, mockingly refusing to die and allow the suspense to end. Niji had come back not too long ago, his operation being not as complex as Chaoji, but certainly being a handful for the staff. He was wrapped up like a mummy, the only thing not covered was his head, and those nearly constantly glaring eyes. When asked how he felt by Tenten he barked out he was fine, startling her and making her feel horrible for disturbing whatever was wrong with him. Shino was rushed through with only a few cracked bones and exhaustion, Kiba vowed that he would stick with Shino as long as he could, and Hinata agreed, under request of course. Lee was treated for broken bones and complete exhaustion, but otherwise he was fine and under Tenten's care which he accepted unlike the stuck-up Hayuga. That was until he passed out once again from his battle. That left Sasuke in the problem case. He now lies on a hospital bed, held down with not only leather straps, but also steel shackles and chains. He had a few IVs going into his arm along with a chakra replenishing medicine, but otherwise he was fine, unconscious, while Sakura sat by his side praying for his health and sanity. Oddly enough this little ragtag group of misfits were all together in the same room, four hospital beds, with one last one open for Chaoji, when, not if, he came back. The mood was glum, and frequently hatred was thrown across the room from Hayuga genius to the heiress who only stared back with those hollow milky white eyes. That was not the only anger, every so often the Achiha were served the exact same looks, yet they also held pity. Ino and Shikamaru sat in the emergency center waiting room, Shikamaru watching the red light above the door intently, while Ino wrung her hands in her lap. Neither one wanted to see Chaoji go, he was too sweet and kind for that sort of fate. Sure he was a pig and a slob, but he was a very loyal and good friend. They wouldn't trade anything in the world for him. Well fancy meeting you here rang a voice Shikamaru recognized immediately. He turned and was suddenly face to face with Narnobu. Shikamaru, for the first time that Naruto saw, glared and spoke with a dangerous edge to his voice, this is not the best time Nobu. Naruto raised his head and turned to see the operating room's light glowing bright red, oh he turned to the two and bowed with his hands clasped in prayer, my apologies. 
I didn't realize. Indeed Gara said behind Naruto as he too had his hands clasped in prayer. Nobusama tends not to notice the emotions of sorrow. An angered Dadino looked between the two and then at Shikamaru before she piped up. Who the hell are those two Nobu faced Ino and bowed. My name is Kuijeki Nobu and my associate and friend is Abaku no Gara. We were the ones that aided this team in their retrieval mission. But Lamino said with a surprised and oddly blushing face it's nice to meet you. Naruto smiled. Likewise a what is your name Ino Ino said, holding out her hand. Yamanaka Ino. Naruto smiled and took the outstretched palm. Ah, the Yamanaka. A very unique family and it explains the association with Nara-san. Am I correct if I guess that Akamichi-san is in there? Both nodded solemnly while Naruto and Gara's gazes met, a small smile forming on Gara's lips, while Naruto quietly sighed. Naruto took a step back so he was side by side with Gara, confusing Ino and Shikamaru as to what was happening. In remarkable tandem they clasped their hands in prayer and bowed their heads, Akamichi-san is now forever in our prayers. The two waiting for Chaoji stared for a moment before Ino asked, do you always do that Naruto sighed and scratched the back of his head as he stood up straight, Gara-san demands we do it whenever we find a worthy case. Gara produced a small grin while Naruto continued, thank the gods we only run into two or three every couple of years. You just don't enjoy praying for others good health Nobu Samagara defended making Naruto sigh. It's Nobu Sangara, San Amino began. I don't know if this is a lover's spat or what, but could you move it down? The hall both ninja froze, and Shikamaru had to clasp a hand over his mouth. It just wouldn't be right for him to laugh. Can't laugh, can't laugh, can't laugh. Naruto turned with agonizing slowness until he faced Ino with shaky calm. I can assure you that Gara San is not gay, and neither am I. If you are referring to our familiarity there is something too deep for you to comprehend. Yamanaka Gara growled in fury as his fist clenched and his ominous chakra grew, something far from what your mind can grasp. Ino shook from fear of the rage Gara exhibited and Shikamaru forgot long ago what was so funny. The raw emotion and power this guy emitted was insane, and if he called Nobu, Nobu-sama that meant Nobu was far more dangerous. Hey Henaruto said, grabbing hold of Gara's shoulders and turning him to the hallway. You go cool off for a moment Gara-san, I won't be but a moment. Gara reluctantly left much to Ino and Shikamaru's relief. Naruto sighed and wiped the line of sweat from his brow, turning to Ino and Shikamaru he spoke, trust me when I say never mention anything related to love around Gara. it's something that's very touchy for him. Both nodded quickly, not really trusting their voices at the moment. Naruto scratched the back of his head, but I understand you didn't know, and I'm sorry for his outburst. I know I'll make it up to you Yamanaka-san. Suddenly his right hand was glowing with crimson fire, and Ino was instantly afraid. Don't worry Ino Shikamaru said as calmly as he could, it may look terrible, but it works. Ino gulped and nodded, attempting to keep her cool as Naruto drew closer with his hand of crimson flame. I promise Yamanaka-san Naruto said softly as he placed his hand over her bandaged eye, this will not hurt in the least. Suddenly, Ino felt the oddest sensation of a warm breeze blowing over her face, caressing her cheeks with gentle warmth and flowing through her hair like the summer breeze until it all took a turn for the weird. She felt the warm breeze pass through the bandages over her eye and even her eyelid, going deeper and deeper until she felt the warm breezy feeling caress the very out of her inner eye. It flowed gently over her injured orb, making the dull chronic throb that had vanished into the warm numbness. She felt so relaxed at the touch she nearly fell asleep, it was just so gentle despite the vicious and powerful aura it gave off. Gradually Naruto drew his hand back, and with it left the warm breeze, the crimson fire on his hand, fading as he grinned and said, there, all better Yamanaka Sandadino looked up to whom she knew as Nobu, and quickly reached for her bandages, tearing them off as swiftly as possible, allowing her now repaired light blue orb to view the world in perfect vision. She closed the eye that it used to be her only one, and confirmed what she hoped. She wasn't dreaming, she could see out of the once dead eye. Wow, Ino said as her vision dropped to her hands that rested in her lap. She was able to watch with perfect 20 vision, as drops fell from her nose to her palms, she was crying before she knew it. They told me I'd never have this eye again. Thank you so much Nobu-san she looked up to find he was already gone, while Shikamaru pointed to the red light above the operation door. Let me guess Nobu Samagara grumbled, you gave her the use of her eye again. Naruto grinned white, allowing his canines to show, set the seeds when most vulnerable Gara-san. Besides, she looked like she needed a good pick-me-up. Did you actually? Gara began to question, but Naruto's grin fell into a small smirk, you should know me and my jokes by now Gara. She has neither use nor need for it. All I did was a good deed and nothing more. Besides Naruto said with a soft and slightly regretful tone, I already set more seeds than I care to account for, and I need to rack up some good deeds. Gara nodded solemnly. As you say Nobusama. Naruto was walking just a bit ahead of Gara, leading the way with brief movements of his body, or even a full-blown turn. Gara was silently thinking to himself as Naruto did the same, for some reason the last topic of conversation turned the silence into a tense one. 
would you look at that Naruto suddenly said with a small smile over his shoulder to Gara. we're already here. Naruto grasped the handle and pushed, suddenly all eyes were on the door, those who couldn't turn their heads either waited or in Niji's case, activated his Byakugan with what little chakra he had. Through the door walked an oddity of a person followed by one of the ninja who aided in the retrieval of Ichiha Sasuke. Afternoon Naruto said with a smirk, how are all of you doing? He was quickly on the receiving end of many glares, something that Gara didn't take all that lightly, as he easily evened it out with his own aura and chakra. Feeling the boost of killer intent and knowing Gara's personality Naruto turned to face Gara with held up open palms. Gara San Naruto said in exasperation, I'm trying to find a team here not to kill them. Heads shot up, but Tenten was the fastest to the draw, team. Who are you and what are you talking about Naruto sighed and thought to himself, I feel as though people have been repeating this one line all day. My name is Ibaku no Gara Gara spoke up as he crossed his arms and leaned against the far wall, deciding his part of the conversation was over. Naruto grinned at the assembled group and said, they call me Kuijeki Nobu, and as to what I'm talking about. I'm new here and I'm looking for a team to show me the ropes of Konoha. What do you mean team to show you the ropes? Kiba questioned with honest curiosity. I heard that Gara was the ninja who helped Lee beat his opponent. That must mean you were the one to track down and beat Sasuke. Naruto grinned at the coat-covered boy. Wow, nothing escapes you. I'll keep your name and mind in Yuzuka. Kiba Kiba said and held up his small bandage puff with hesitance. This is Akamaru. Naruto looked him over for a moment, his single crimson eye seeming to pierce Kiba's soul before he said in a deeply serious tone, I can see by the way you speak with regret and the injuries on your shinobi dog, you were either stupid, arrogant, or a mixture of the two. Dot when Kiba hung his head Naruto added, but it looks like you've recognized your mistake. Still no offense but not something I need for my team. Who do you think you are rose a growl from one of the beds earning Naruto's full attention. He turned his head to see the wide eyes of Niji glaring at him down, filled to the brim with hatred so hot that if it were anyone under Jounin, it could have killed them. Naruto instead stared directly into those blazing wide eyes, as they attempted to kill him with a mere stare. Suddenly his lip split in a grin that could be categorized as legally insane, and his crimson eye took on the gleam of someone suffering from a psychotic episode. I can see, no feel your hatred from over here. I can read the pain in those icy wide eyes of yours Naruto said with that insane grin of his, get over it, and maybe then we'll talk. You can't talk to him like that spoke Tenten, her anger thick as she brought forth a kunai from her pouch. Naruto eyed her for a moment, his insanity suddenly gone in a haze of indifference, then shrugged, weapons master right. The way you hold your kunai and how swiftly you reach for it gives you away. No thank you, but I don't need a weapon specialist. Once again Naruto looked around the room and caught the hint of a green so bright that it nearly blinded him, that alone made him smile. Ali San Naruto said happily walking over to Lee's bed, but saw him sleeping soundly. Oh. Never mind Lee San, I can see you're sleeping Naruto said in a quiet whisper, but trust me when I say that I'd like to fight you one day, see how strong you are against me. His smile fell and he blinked in confusion as he raised his leg up, pulling down the top of his sandals, and pulling some dead and decaying bugs from his ankle. Hmm, what's this? Oh my, is this a Kakechu? Amazing, that must mean there's an aburum in this room Naruto said in excitement looking around, finally spotting Shino with that crimson eye of his. It must be you Naruto said walking over with the shriveled up bug between his fingers, the excess of clothing to hide the holes on your body and the insects in your system. You know in some areas of the world you are just a myth, I can say I am most honored Naruto bowed, purposely dropping the shriveled up bug on the sheets of Shino's bed, where he was now sitting rather than lying down. Kiba saw the sweat beating Shino's brow as he stared at the dead bug, Kiba knew how angry Shino got when someone killed his bugs, but this bug didn't look squished. Its body rather seemed as though it caved in on itself, being turned from a grape to a raisin in seconds. Shino instantly recognized the insect's condition, it only happened when his forefathers attempted to drain the chakra of the Kaiubi no Kitsune. He looked up and saw Naruto's wide grin, those elongated canines poking just beyond his lips, in what might be considered to most as a friendly grin. Shino knew from years of reading and using even the minutest of body language that it was a very, very high-level friendly threat. It was a simple warning that was thus, I respect you, but if you try that ever again you will have no future outside of this building. Suddenly his grin turned from threat level to actual friendliness as he talked, I hope we can be comrades in the future Aburam-san, but I'm not quite sure you are what I'm looking for. Naruto turned and cast his gaze around the room, pointedly ignoring the glares he was receiving, and eventually settled upon Hayuga Hinata's empty stare into nothingness. He approached her, drawing nothing from her but her silent attention, as she gave him the same sorrowful and empty gaze she gave everyone. Naruto stared at her with an unreadable emotion pasted on his face, his one visible eye shining with something mysterious, as she merely watched him stand there. In time he bent over so he was face to face with her, her pale and void by Akigan containing eyes staring into his own slit crimson orb. 
This staring contest lasted a good while, neither moving nor blinking, only gazing into the eyes of the other. Hinata, despite her emotionless and new personality, began to lightly sweat, and a small pinkish blush crawled up onto her cheeks. She had never been in this close contact with a boy, or anyone for that matter, without them giving her a look of pure hatred. Suddenly he leaned up and she felt something soft and warm connect with her forehead, did he just kiss her forehead? Her eyes widened, the hollowness of her gaze gone as it was replaced with incredible amounts of surprise and confusion. She didn't know why or how, but her lips parted, and from her previously unused vocal cords, sounded a nearly silent whisper, Nobu-san. Naruto chuckled quietly as he pulled his head back slightly, whispering in his own quiet voice, I knew you could talk. Maybe, and yes, I'll definitely be thinking about it. Daughter face became a deep crimson, and she looked down in shame and defeat, screwing her eyelids shut, she felt a surge of emotion that she wanted to suppress. Fisting her hands in her pants tightly she tried to forcefully repress her emotions, to her emotion only led to pain. The Takyagutsu are only good to puppet masters he whispered with a small smile as he lifted her face up by her chin, and as far as I can tell the only strings being pulled aren't made of chakra dot she stared into his single crimson eye, which held a new depth to it, watching as the deep red warped and moved just a bit. Her eyes watching the movement as if inside was a slowly smoldering flame behind a slashed crimson lens. He grinned to himself as he saw just a small spark deep within the hollow orbs of milky white turning them, even if it was the briefest second, a soft pale lavender. Naruto smiled and backed away from her wide-eyed form, casting his gaze over his shoulder and directly to the bed of Ichiha Sasuke. There's only one of you I know I'm going to take for sure Naruto said with a widening grin as he turned his entire body toward Sasuke, earning Sakura's pointed gaze instantly. Naruto took one step forward and she was on the defensive, racing around to place herself between Naruto and Sasuke, then reaching for a kunai in her pouch. Before she could move her hand from the leather bag she felt something wrap around her wrist and stop her, looking down, she found her arm being held by a band of sand. She followed the trail of crushed stone, and it led directly to Gara and his gourd, his green eyes staring into her own, almost daring her to try and continue. Gara San Naruto said, grabbing hold of the stream of sand tightly, you may release her since I have no problem with what she has done. I did appear a bit darker with my words than I would have liked. Gara was apprehensive, but did release her, making her warily eye the ninja with a gourd. Now Miss Naruto began with a much more friendly voice, if I may Sakura was on Naruto's case quickly, her hand still on the kunai in her pouch, my name is Haruno Sakura, and Sasuke is resting so just get out now. Naruto smirked and raised his eyebrow, my what a temper and potential too, I'm surprised by you Haruno-san. Naruto's smirk fell into a smile with the hope of a friendly air, I am only here to speak with Sasuke and offer him a step in the right direction. He saw Sakura's body go on offensive mode when she drew her kunai, while he felt anger and killing intent rise around him, he had to stem this quickly, or else he would have many hurt ninja on his hands. If you don't believe me then inspect his curse seal Naruto said, backing away towards the door with his hands in the air. Sakura and everyone else watched the retreat carefully, finally being satisfied when he reached the door. Sakura looked around to her friends, the ones that were mobile, and as they gave her a brief nod she turned and walked over to the side of Sasuke's bed. She slowly lifted the covers from his left shoulder and turned him just the slightest bit to his side, looking for the seal placed upon him by the snake Orochimaru. What in the world Sakura said in amazement, it it's gone gasps were heard all around only to be pierced with Naruto chuckle. I told you I only want to help Ichiha Sandadi could feel the distrust from most of the room, so he sighed with frustration, I guess I have no choice. I apologize in advance for this Gara-san. Sakura nor did anyone else in the room have time to shout for help, the binds of sand had already covered them completely. Shino attempted to mount an attack with his bugs, but found they were stopped by the many layers of sand and the sheer amount of chakra pressure being placed upon the particles of crushed rock. I apologize to you, all Naruto said with a sorrowful tone as he walked to the foot of Sasuke's bed, but this needs to be done. Naruto took a deep breath, clasping his hands together in prayer as he began to mutter to himself. Gara watched Naruto with surprised eyes, he didn't know Nobusama would be taking it this far. Naruto suddenly took a deep breath, an inhalation too great to be just a normal breath, and with one great exhale, he covered Sasuke's bed in a torrent of crimson flames. Sakura screamed behind her muzzle of sand, while all the others could only watch in horror, as the Ichiha's bed was covered completely in the blood-red flames. As quickly as he had started it, Naruto had ceased his blowing, allowing the crimson flames to rest upon the bed covering Sasuke from head to toe. The flames did not spread, they seemed drawn to the Ichiha's most likely barbecked form like moths too well, you get the idea. 
Naruto turned his red eye to the group, the feeling behind it being sorrowful. I'm sorry if this has scared you. Dottie looked at Sakura and saw the rage in her eyes. It caused him to give her a wry grin. Look underneath Haruno san. Sakura's gaze hardened just up until the point she saw a head of pitch black hair rise from the scarlet flames. What the hell is going on? Sasuke mumbled more to himself than anyone else as he sleepily rubbed the right side of his head, feeling somewhat tired but overall completely revitalized. Just as he arose from the bed of flames they dispersed, vanishing without even so much as a scorch mark or smoke, yet no part of Sasuke's binds remained. Blinking a few times Sasuke was able to register the freak at the end of his bed, and everyone else held in cocoons of sand. Naruto smirked, hey Ichiha, remember me Sasuke's eyes snapped open. He remembered that voice easily. Nobu Naruto saw the rage build in Sasuke's eyes, but in return, he merely gave a friendly smile and spoke as any civilized person would, before you try to beat me, allow me to see your curse seal, find it for me. Sasuke's face twisted in confusion, and he reached back with his hand searching for the slight elevation of his skin, that was the mark Orochimaru left on him. His eyes snapped open feeling only smooth skin, what in the hell the curse seal is gone, Ichiha Naruto said as he crossed his arms, suddenly serious, when you attack me, my Kuijeki Tama swallowed not only your chakra, but that power enhancing free will sapping excuse for a seal. You should be thinking much more clearly now so I want to offer a deal. Sasuke actually stopped and thought about it, something that with the curse seal he knew he wouldn't even consider doing. What kind of deal Sasuke asked, still angry at being beaten but oddly relieved that the snake no longer had a hold on him. Well seeing as I am new here I want some of the best. The best skill, the best strength, the best overall team on my side. You will fit the bill perfectly, Ichiha Naruto calmly stated. However you're not that great of a leap ahead of the rest of the genin, so I will train you Naruto said with a smirk, you could become incredibly strong through my training regiment. I can promise it will not be easy, but the fruits of the labor will definitely outweigh whatever pain or near-death experience you may, no, will feel. Sasuke was listening closely so Naruto continued, for this to work you will be on my team obviously, a three-man cell under a jounin, and we will have to work on that attitude of yours, but above all, Naruto suddenly grew deathly serious as he spoke, you must cease your life as an avenger. Sasuke's eyes snapped open, but quickly narrowed in anger, over my dead body Nobu team. Naruto frowned, I expected better from an Ichiha. He did leave a lot to be desired. Sasuke's hands clasped together in a seal but he suddenly froze, looking down he saw his hands wrapped in a cocoon of sand, ceasing their movement completely. Once again Gara had come to Naruto's aid, but this time it was welcomed with a small smile of thanks toward Gara. Naruto then turned back to the now struggling Ichiha, hatred burning in his eyes much like the Hayuga before. If you rethink your decision Naruto said solemnly as he headed for the door, you can find me through the Hokage. Naruto opened the door and exited followed soon after by Gara, who took the time to glare at the Ichiha before he left, drawing all the sand he used to bind with him. As the two left they passed by the three Anbu guards who were on their way to the room to apprehend Ichiha Sasuke, if he had indeed been returned. Silence pierced the room, none having words, but rather emotions for the situation. Sasuke and Niji were on the same wavelength, angered beyond belief at the audacity of the idiotic yet powerful ninja, that was until the door opened a little while later, and Sasuke was approached by the Anbu. Sakura and Tenten were frightened but also angry, such conflicting emotions gave them an increasingly bad headache. Shino was still in shock as was Kiba, but Shino hit it better, his high collar concealing his wide open mouth, while Kiba's lagging jaw was out in the open. Lee was still asleep, resting comfortably on his bed, completely oblivious to what had happened. Hinata's normally dull wide eyes began to have brief sparks of life here and there, whatever was going through her head was a mystery. Ara walked along beside Naruto, they had long ago left behind the Konoha hospital, and their brief stop at the Hokage's tower, and since then, Naruto had yet to say a word in Gara's presence. They ignored the looks they received as they walked, they had been served those looks so many times before it didn't matter in the least. The Gara all that mattered at the moment was, Nobu-sama, is everything alright Naruto sighed, and he looked up to the path ahead, briefly recalling the map Siratobi had shown him from memory before he answered, that went a little worse than expected. Gara nodded but was put off by Naruto's sudden huge fang grin, but it also went so much better. Gara looked questioningly, but Naruto only chuckled with a low tone to it, plant seeds at the most vulnerable time Gara said. Naruto looked out of the corner of his one demonic crimson eye and said, I may be no Orochimaru, but I do know how to exploit a weakness for best results. Gara gave a small grin in return, I thought you said you said enough seeds, Nobusama. Naruto chuckled again with a low and dark edge to his voice, if planting one more ensures the Kanoha sector, then so be it. Besides, he could use it, look underneath Gara Sandot for a while Naruto's toothy grin was prominent, making all who saw him and Gara walking shake at the image it gave. Soon after his wild grin suddenly faded into a sad smile, the Hitakigutsu the girl you kissed Gara asked with curiosity, he had never seen Nobusama treat someone like that after just meeting them. 
Laredo nodded while he gave a sad stare to nothing. Her eyes, they're just like yours were when we first met. Gara showed no feeling, his face didn't break from his emotionless mask, but he did turn away with a thought, so that's why you were so sweet on her Nobu-sama. You should help her Nobu-sama Gara suddenly spoke with his calm and even tone after a moment of silence, as you have helped me. A life like that can only lead to pain and misery, something I would never pray for even upon my worst enemy. Naruto took a moment of silent thought as Gara had, considering his proposal as if it were a business deal. He suddenly closed his eyes and nodded, okay I believe I will Gara-san, since you ask so nicely. Gara was silent a second before he chuckled, with her I doubt you'll even have to consider planting a seed. Naruto almost choked on something, and it startled Gara, making him worry about Nobu-sama's health. Nobu Samagara questioned as he patted Naruto's back, are you okay a few good coughs later, and Naruto was back standing upright, coughing every so often as he said, never say that again Gara. Gara stared in confusion for a while until his eyes slowly widened in realization, and his cheeks took on a light pink tint. Instantly his mouth went down in a scowl, and he glared at Naruto, you've been reading Icha Icha again, haven't you Nobu Sama? Naruto began to sweat, but thankfully they had reached their destination, the outer edge of Konoha on the exact borderline between the streets and the trees of Konoha Forest. Hey look Gara san Naruto said with a nervous yet hopeful smile, we're here Gara looked to where Naruto pointed and found only trees. What are you talking about Nobu-sama? Naruto grinned and formed a hand seal, observed Gara san Naruto sped through multiple hand seals, causing his hands to blur with the speed and number of seals, until he ended on a seal Gara did not recognize. Yuzumaki Naruto accompanied by Sabaku no Gara Naruto said, and suddenly the trees blurred, becoming nothing more than a memory as the illusion of a concealed home was revealed. My Naruto said with an unsuppressed grin, Otu-san did good for himself Nobu Samagara said with wide eyes as they passed through the front gates, this is insane. Before them lay a variable mansion, it may not have been as big or complex as the one of the Hayugas, but it was quite large. By the look of the outside it could very well have more than 50 different rooms, the size and even more so the architecture was mind-boggling. As the sun set the low orange glow of the slowly slumbering star cast the rays onto the pure white walls of the home, making it seem as if fire had been contained within a clear coat of paint on the mansion. Naruto's grin nearly split his face in half, welcome home. The chains of steel, warped and twisted through hours of molding and bathing in fires of hellish heat, just to fit his wrists and hold them captive. His hands were captured in those damned gloves, not allowing him to perform any hand seals by holding his fingers in sleeves of steel. Over his face was a mask, not allowing his face to be shown while on the forehead was a grand seal. The sealing of chakra had been activated, and now he was as harmless as a kitten, a kitten with years of ninja escape training, but still nowhere near as harmful as he could be. He glared through the holes of his seal mask, watching as he passed by glares and sympathetic looks of all degrees. He was the exile, the outcast, the deserter returning to the world he had given up on. He cast an angry glare down to the dirt before him, all of his none to carefully laid plans had been laid to waste, and in addition to losing what had been the greatest power he had ever held in his life, he was now captive to his own home nation. He felt the hands on his shoulder grasping him with a firm yet comfortable grip. No matter how skilled he was at escape, he could never even hope to break free from the trio of Anbu who held him on a direct course to the Hulkage Tower. The greatest hitch they had was without a doubt the hospital episode, the girl who had taken it upon herself to heal Sasuke was a little bit more than apprehensive about the restraints he was to wear. A brief flash of their orders from the Hokage himself, and that was able to shut up anyone who dared to question their methods. They trudged through under the slowly darkening sky, the sun was on the last legs of its daily journey, and coupled that with the growing clouds, and the world was bound to grow dark. The world of Konoha was growing colder and those who ran business during the day were closing up shop, allowing those who ruled the evening to have their time to shine. The trek was long and tedious, being followed by many onlookers, as the last Ichiha went before the Hokage didn't help either. It took time weaving past and through the gathered groups, but they finally reached the Hokage Tower. The march up the stairs wasn't nearly as long as he thought it could have been, there could have been more watchers and followers who came to see the fate of the Ichiha. Actually there were no followers, they had all been held at the door by guards, claiming that this was a moment for the Ichiha and the Hokage alone. It was not long before they reached the Hokage's massive doors, he looked upon them with a dark gaze, knowing that those enormous wooden barriers were the gates to his judgment. Slowly, theatrically nonetheless, the doors opened revealing a room surprisingly shrouded in darkness, the only light of the room was the moon's ethereal glow, that filtered through the potential storm clouds. At the moment only a small portion of the office was bathed in the soft glow. The Hokage's desk and chair was flooded with the pastel moonlight, while what he presumed to be his spot was shrouded in impenetrable shadows. Ah Sasuke the Hokage spoke in that deep and sage tone he had, come on in. And guards, kindly stay outside the door. I'm sure Ichiha-san would be more comfortable with a one-on-one -on -one discussion. 
Inbu modded into the darkness of the Hokage's room and allowed the lone Ichiha to cross the threshold himself, feeling the aura of strength and authority the Hokage produced increase tenfold when he stepped into the room and into the darkness. Sasu took a few more steps into the room, and he heard the creaking of doors followed soon after by a loud slam, the closing of the doors meant complete confidentiality, if he so wished the Hokage could kill him and claim he was attacked first. Sit down Sasuke the Hokage said, his chair turned around to face him instead of the cloudy night and the pale moon. Sasuke shuffled forward, moving from the massive wood of the door to the darkness of judgment before the Hokage. He eventually sat down, his mask and chains in place, not allowing him any aggressive movement whatsoever. Before we get started the Hokage said with a slowly widening grin, Sasuke could feel the cool enjoyment in the old man's voice, how are you feeling? It's not every day a young man like yourself is put in the hospital for complete chakra exhaustion and is able to move the very same day. Sasuke glared at nothing but spoke, the thin steel mesh mask not hindering his speech in the least, I'm fine Hokage-sama. That's good the Hokage said with a small chuckle as he crossed his hands on his desk, can't have one of our own injured, no matter what the cause. Sasuke winced at the implication of those words, but the Hokage didn't stop, speaking of causes. What caused you to attempt a defection from Kanoha to Odo, and Sasuke looked down in defeat, he knew he was beat now, so it was better to confess and end the suspense, I went for more power. Hirachimaru promised and delivered more power so I can kill my brother. The Hokage chuckled as he leaned back in his chair, causing his still crossed hands to fall neatly into his lap, and you think that he will follow through with just giving you power freely. You think he will just allow you into his village, train you until you are strong enough, then let you go out to kill your brother and restart your clan Sasuke was about to say something, but the Hokage stopped him, no, don't answer that. You don't know Orochimaru that well, you could have just said something you'd regret. The Hokage's tone grew deeper, darker and more serious as he leaned forward, my old student would never let you go through like that. He wants something in return, something that you wouldn't be able to handle Sasuke. He wants your eyes and that doesn't mean he would take them from your skull, he would take your body for the Sharingan. Sasuke's eyes opened in surprise, that snake would take his body so freely for the eyes he so desperately wanted, but why? Orochimaru is insane, Sasuke the Hokage said with a regretful tone, he wants nothing more than to know all the in the world, so he can become the ultimate being. With your eyes he can copy any he encountered making his dream come true that much faster. He would probably find a way to repopulate the clan, taking over a new Sharingan eye every time the body he had wore down. Sasuke was staring with unabashed hatred and shame, he had nearly fallen for that nonsense snake's tricks. The Hokage felt the anger within Sasuke grow and truthfully he couldn't blame the boy. He had nearly forfeited his life and the future of the Achiha clan to the serpent that he once called close to him. I can see that this isn't comforting news the Hokage said wisely, earning Sasuke's glare of fire on him, it was obvious that the boy now had three life goals. First was the extermination of his brother, second was repopulation of his clan, and the third was to destroy Orochimaru for what he had planned. I'm willing to guess that you now want to destroy Orochimaru as much as you do your brother the Hokage said, earning Sasuke's low nod, he was too taken with rage to agree forcefully. Well I have a deal for you the Hokage said with a clever smirk. In place of jail and even death for treason, you will only have 100 hours of community service and the Hokage paused a bit on purpose, just to watch the Achiha's eager eyes, he was sure if there wasn't a chakra seal, then his Sharingan would be blazing, you must undergo training by Kuijeki Nobu. He received the expected answers, vehement shouts of no and questioning if he was insane. With a swift wave of his hand and a burst of chakra Sasuke shut his mouth, knowing it was the Hokage's time to speak. I was given a report by Nobu that not only has he defeated you when is the second level of the curse, seal the Hokage said with a stern voice, but he has successfully removed the seal from your system, allowing you to think much clearer than with it. Sasuke hung his head slightly, that nonsense made a complete fool out of him, and now the old man wanted him to train with him. It was a freaking conspiracy. He also told me that he would offer to train you personally, but if you refuse then I shouldn't do a thing. If it isn't obvious I'm going against that and offering you a way out the Hokage said calmly. Sasuke refused to respond, he only stared out into space glassy-eyed in his own world of thoughts. As much as he hated to admit it, Nobu had defeated him with no effort even at level 2 curse seal, something that he was certain no one else could ever hope to do. Sasuke before you make a decision I want you to think about it. He has power he is willing to give you so that you may accomplish all of your goals. He is actually eager to train you for nothing, as long as you are on his team the Hokage said with a slowly widening smile, I can vouch for his sincerity, I have known him for a long time. So will you take his offer or, most likely, hang. Sasuke was silent, his eyes still holding that glazed look as he thought. Saratobi watched as the boy passed the time in his thoughts, the clouds over the moon slowly removed themselves bathing Sasuke in the pale glow of the lunar light. 
Fine Sasuke said angrily, I'll train with Nobu. Sirotobi grinned ear to ear at the answer, excellent, let's start on the papers. Arasan he groaned angrily as he glared at the beautiful oak door, you don't have to make sure each and every grain of your sand is clean, you know hurry up Nobu Samaro's a questioning voice from his side, in a flash he turned to view Gara standing there in shorts and a t-shirt. He hadn't a thing in the way of weaponry on him, and he looked incredibly groggy. What are you yelling at he questioned with a yawn and a scratch of his blood-colored hair. Naruto himself was gripped in relatively the same thing, except his belt of tails around his waist and the black tie of his hair, it was lying down on his body and seemed very wet, I thought you were in your bathroom taking a shower like I did. Gara blinked in confusion, I just woke up Nobusama, and my room is on the other side of the hall, I woke up because of your screaming. Naruto stared for a second before chuckling nervously and saying, eh yeah that's what I mean. I was trying to wake you up because you're being lazy. Bara turned his head to the side, lo and behold he spied a clock on the wall, saying it was only 5 in the morning, at 5 in the morning Naruto nodded confidently, we have to get ready for the meeting, you know Gara's emerald eyes just started, you woke up and yelled at the wrong door, in an attempt to get me to wake up at 5 in the morning, because we have a meeting at 10. Naruto nodded again as he crossed his arms, I don't see why this is so hard to understand Gara-san. Gara stared for a minute at the nervously twitching Naruto, if I had the energy I'd strangle you right now. Naruto grinned wide in relief, ah, don't worry about energy Gara-san, I made some coffee with breakfast. Gara sighed as he put his face in his palm, leave before I decide to make my sand use you as a stress release ball. Naruto laughed nervously, sure thing Gara-san, remember we have a meeting with my team at 10 so get ready, breakfast is downstairs by. Gara watched a blur of black and red race down the hall and vanished down the stairs, too many questions too tired, but I will get him back. With that Gara did an about face and trudged into his room, intent on getting at least a few more hours of sleep. Gara woke about 3 hours later, took his shower and got dressed in a lighter outfit than the other day. His attire now consisted of black pants that were slightly baggy and bundled up at the calves. He still wore his black sandals, but under his pants he wore steel mesh and bandages. Trading in his coat he wore a black t-shirt with long sleeve mesh underneath and his massive sash and belt to hold on his gourd. He still wore his hat, but he allowed it to hang on his neck, no use for it in the house. Hanging down upon his chest were the metal tags from before, each holding a different but equally complex seal of mysterious origin and use. He journeyed downstairs and found Naruto already up and about, he too was dressed in less cumbersome clothing than yesterday. He wore a crimson-colored baggy short sleeved over shirt, and under it, he wore a tight jet black sleeveless shirt, with a faint mist-like ruby red swirl on the chest. The shirts were worn over an enhanced steel mesh shirt, a secondary defense just in case. On his arms he wore form-fitting raven black cloth arm guards, and they were supplemented on his hands by black open finger swordsman style gloves with odd seals on the backs of the hands. Around his neck were the same metal tags as Gar War, each one of them dulled with a special polish, so as to not reflect much light. Going from his right shoulder to his left hip spanned his thick dark scarlet leather sash with the filled pouches and the small left shoulder support straps while on his back was his surprisingly small sword. The foot-long handle was tanned leather wrapped around material that couldn't quite be placed with its faint grey color and illusion of fragility. The sheath itself was a deep crimson with midnight black ghost-like designs featuring a ghastly kitsune shape. He wore looser than normal black pants and sandals with dark bandages, covering what little space was open on his legs. Good morning Gara San Naruto said with a smile, sorry about earlier, I am a bit excited you know. Gara nodded in acceptance of his apology, I understand Nobusama, it was no problem at all, so do not dwell on it. If I may ask what you made for breakfast, please don't tell me it's Raymond again. Naruto chuckled as he shook his head, not just a simple meal of rice bowls and assorted foods with coffee. Gara's eyebrows rose, impressive Nobusama, you resisted the temptation of Raymond. Naruto laughed at one of Gara's rare jokes, it's a miracle I know. They ate breakfast with some conversation, no matter how long they had spent together, a good conversation between them was enjoyable. Nobu would tell of certain breakthroughs and then give Gara some orders to be followed in the future. Are you sure Hokage-sama will approve Gara questioned as he took a bite of his rice ball. Naruto smirked confidently as he ate his own meal, the old man knows what's going on. He's the only one we can trust with these ambitions, and he is more than willing to help. He will be giving you papers and a hit I ate today, allowing you to exit and enter the village whenever you want, and giving you passage into any friendly neighboring nations. The rest of the conversation was just random chit-chat. When it was time to leave Gara picked up the trays and utensils with his sand and dispensed them in the sink, allowing Naruto to go through the last few preparations for the day. They met again at the door, Gara waiting for Naruto as he fumbled while putting a few things in his pocket, 
Bar immediately recognized the signs and grinned as he pulled his hat from the back of his neck to the top of his head, after waking me up at 5 in the morning, you're the one who is going to make us late. Naruto chuckled at the statement, A, hey, I just forgot something in my room, it happens. In no time they were off through the village, wordlessly and unanimously, deciding to hold back their conversations as they looked around at the village inhabitants' reactions. It was a rainbow feedback, some were surprised and some were uninterested, some were happy and some were angry, some were even inventing new responses for this event. It was a variable grab bag of emotions that they observed, something that in some way or another made Gara feel increasingly uncomfortable. He was quite relieved when they reached the Hokage Tower, the sun shining bright and casting an aura around it, making it look even more regal than before. They entered with little problem and ascended the stairs to their destination, Saratobi's office. Gara just barely stopped Naruto from throwing the doors open wildly, suggesting that this was something that needed a more subtle touch to it. Naruto agreed, not quite sure what he was thinking, then slowly opened the door revealing Suratobi with a smile and Sasuke with a sneer. Naruto swiftly grew a grin, ah Chihasan. You've decided to join us. Sasuke cast a brief almost unnoticeable glance to Suratobi before nodding, yeah, you better live up to your promise. Naruto caught the glance and turned his single-eyed sight to the innocently smiling Suratobi. Naruto's gaze hardened for the slightest second before he sighed, that's good, but you do remember what I said right. I do promise pain, it's not just a promise it's a guarantee. Sasuke scoffed at Naruto's words, yeah I heard you the first time Nobu dot very well Nobu said, turning to Gara, Gara san I believe you were just about to assume your position as a chunin of Konoha. Gara nodded and bowed to the Hokage, Hokage sama, what is my mission for the day your mission will be to familiarize yourself with Konoha and introduce yourself to the other chunin, who will be holding a meeting in gathering hall B, the lower floors of the tower, at 3 this afternoon. And you will be receiving this the Hokage said holding up a small envelope, due to your condition. Ara nodded and approached the Hokage, taking hold of the envelope he turned and started for the entrance, but was stopped with a minor hand gesture from Naruto. They stood side by side, seeming as though they were staring not at each other, but rather out into space. To anyone this would appear to be rather confusing and of no true value whatsoever. Much like everyone else Sasuke watched in confusion, but Sirotobi observed in curiosity, he had heard of this before, but it was rare to see. But the quick nod Gara continued his path, exiting the room without so much as a word spoken. Naruto Saratobi said with an intrigued half-smile, I didn't know you and Gara san were able to connect with pulsations of chakra interpreted as thought. It has been said that it can only be done by highly skilled shinobi siblings, since the bonds they share are much stronger than a simple teammate, and sensei. Naruto chuckled, I do have my own orders to give Aji-san, can't have them being leaked out through simple spying. Sasuke was utterly lost, but figured that he was too out of the loop to understand or care, so he simply settled himself back into his chair and waited. When the two were done with their chuckles Sasuke spoke, so who else will be on our team Naruto smiled, no grinned at the Achiha, you'll see. Did you give them the correct Aji San Suratobi? Nodded, the second you gave me the information they were contacted and notified of this morning's meeting. Though you were a few minutes early. In fact Suratobi said looking at the clock on the wall, it's 10 right about now. Just as the clock on the wall rang with bells, so did the doors of the Hokage's office slowly open. Sasuke's eyes immediately went to the door expecting someone powerful, but instantly his mouth twisted in the sour distaste of anger. Standing in the open doors was the wide-eyed and short-haired young Hayuga heiress, Hayuga Hinata. By her Sasuke muttered as he turned his glare to the side, not wanting to catch her discomforting empty stare. Naruto gave her a small smile and bowed, Good morning Hayuga-san, I hope you slept well. Hinata's normally dull eyes widened in surprise, asking a silent question which the Hokage answered, He is the one who requested your presence this morning. As of this moment you, Hayuga Hinata, are now on a team with Kijeki Nobu and Ichiha Sasuke. Thus perfect Sasuke grumbled just before he stood, stuck with the Hayuga puppet and a powerful smart. Who's the Jounin sensei he received no words from Naruto, but he did get another grin that sent a shiver down his spin, telling him this couldn't possibly end well. Sasuke looked to Saratobi expecting an answer, but only saw the old man snickering to himself and looking in a different direction than Sasuke. Sasuke curiously followed his line of sight until it landed on oh hell no. No way. Saratobi was looking directly at Naruto who still had that grin plastered on his chops. Now, now it's not nice to call your teammates puppets, or to call your Jounin sensei a smart please tell me you are joking Sasuke spun around to Saratobi with a pleading look whom only shook his head, then quickly gained a serious and authoritative aura about himself. I am not joking Sasuke, Nobu has given me confirmed records of his previous accomplishments, and I find it only right that he be deemed a Jounin. He was registered yesterday and took the option of teaching a three-man team of his choice. The four questions could be raised Naruto elaborated, I only choose two out of three for a few reasons. 
the only one I wanted other than Sasu and Hinata was Lee, but after speaking with the Hokage I discovered that it wouldn't be the best for him. Everyone else had something about them that I didn't want nor need so feel lucky. Besides, it will be easier for you to grow with fewer students to split my attention. Sasuke was about to complain, but in the blink of an eye Naruto was in his face, grinning ear to ear as he said. I suggest you hold your comment Sasuke or whatever deal Aji san gave you isn't going to save you from getting kicked out. The Hokage's eyes widened in realization, he knew. How in the world did he know? Naruto gave the Hokage a side glance, something that lasted not but a few moments, but in that second long stare, he saw the anger Naruto held at the Hokage going behind his back. The crimson of his eye flickered and deep within Sirotobi's mind, he was reminded of the ruby flames that had engulfed Naruto's home several years a seconds, passing the gaze was off him and on Sasuke, who, for what it's worth, was doing a pretty good job holding himself in front of the overpowering shinobi. Anada watched the entire confrontation with confusion and surprise. She hadn't seen the skill Nobu possessed, but at the speed he used in an everyday situation, then he had to be somewhat powerful. She gauged the speed to match that of Rock Lee, and just like the chakra lacking ninja he too used only his muscles, and nothing was almost instantaneous. He took one step back from the Achiha, and reappeared before her with a small smile on his face, that made even his dangerous look seem friendly. As Hokage-sama given you the details he asked kindly which earned a shaking of the head, all she was told was to come for a meeting at 10. Well to shorten the explanation you will be on a team with Ichiha-san and myself, and we will be on a training mission for quite a while Naruto said calmly as he crossed his arms, it will be tough, but I am certain you will grow from it both physically and mentally. Feel free to not say anything if you wish not to participate, but if you do want to join us then a simple yes will suffice. She blinked and seemed near frantic with her thoughts, he observed the numerous glints in her eyes, telling him that there was a quiet battle raging in her mind on whether or not she should accept. Minutes later he turned away with a sigh, well Ichiha-san, I suppose it will be just you and no came a soft whisper behind him. He turned and looked down at the young Hayuga girl, her hands clenched into fists at her side, as she forced words to form from her previously unused vocal cords, I I mean yes I I want to go. Naruto smiled with a kind whisper, good, let's cut those strings of the Hitakigutsu Dadi, turned to face Sasuke and called, come on Sasuke, we have to get going now if we want to make it to the lodgings before nightfall Sasuke grumbled something in reply, and joined the others with his classic angered pose, consisting of hands in his pockets and constant glare on his face. Now if either of you want to pack that's fine, but I doubt you'll need it, I have everything you'll ever need already, provided Naruto said with a smile to his two students, meet me at the northern entrance in the 30 minutes with whatever you want to bring along, now get moving. Anata nodded and bowed, showing a fair amount of respect before leaving while Sasuke just left, not giving one ounce of respect to his new sensei. Shish Naruto muttered as he scratched the back of his head, you'd think I was the one who killed his family. Naruto Sirotobi said, earning Naruto's complete and undivided attention, I want to apologize. Naruto waved him off, it's alright Aji-san, you did what you thought was right. Sirotobi gained a relieved smile, but Naruto's sudden serious stare took it away. He glared down at the Hokage with his single crimson eye that expressed the gravity of his words, but remembered never to do something like that ever again. I have my own way of working things, and if you continue to interfere Kanoha is off my list of allies. Am I clear Sirotobi nodded not in fear, but out of sadness and regret, I understand Naruto, I'm sorry. Naruto suddenly smiled, the anger and malicious attitude gone instantly replaced with a calm and kind tone, don't worry about it Aji-san, it's not like it hurt my plans too much. Remember to inform the Hayuga head of Hinata's absence, though it won't be long here. With that Naruto vanished in a puff of black and red smoke leaving Sirotobi to shiver a bit from the random changes in emotion that Naruto experienced. It was odd how he could change personalities so quickly, but then again he knew the story all too well. They had been walking for hours, it must have been somewhere between 4 and 5 in the afternoon, before Naruto finally turned around with a small smile and spoke, alright team we can take a break. They had walked from the Hokage Tower to the northern exit of Kanoha, traveling by foot through the entirety of the country, revealing nothing but a massive amount of flora and fauna. They had managed to run through a few towns along the way, but they kept a constant pace, not bothering to stop, except for a drink of water and a small ration of food that was just enough to keep hunger at bay. It had taken a long time, and when Naruto decided to stop both Sasuke and Hinata were tired, not exhausted but weary, and to a point aggravated with Naruto's choice of route to wherever they were going so far from Kanoha. Before either of them sat they felt eyes upon them, watching their every movement at every moment. They cast a quick glance to see Naruto spying on them from the corner of his one working eye. Suddenly it popped into both of their heads, this was a test of endurance and ability to understand hidden directions. Both jumped from the seats they would have taken, and instead took to standing or leaning much like their new sensei had. 
Naruto chuckled as he pushed himself from leaning on the tree, not bad, considering it took you two seconds to figure out my plan. Naruto suddenly gained a faraway gaze and his right came up to grasp the tags on his neck, a slow smile crept onto his lips as he spoke, and here comes your second part of the test. Good luck. The last thing they saw was the blurry image of his grinning face, before their attention was directed onto three shinobi who had taken his place. From left to right none of them looked like normal Odo soldiers, they wore the traditional sound garbs only they were a fair bit different than standard issue. The one on the left held himself tall and proud, his arms crossed tightly over his chest, hiding the small holes in his palms. His hair was spiked backwards, and a hit eye of Odo was tied around his head, holding the protective plates on the sides of his face. He looked incredibly confident, and he produced an odd combination of a sneer and a smirk at the two, this fact was only enhanced by the shirty war which proclaimed death three times over. The one on the left was a girl, she too held an aura of confidence and power that most Kanoichi her age didn't. Her hair was as black as the darkest midnight, and it reached down to the backs of her knees being tied tightly with a small band near the end. She, like all of the other members, wore a grey camouflage scarf around her neck, and on her forehead was the hit eye of sound. She didn't look as though she had any weapons, but for some reason a sense of foreboding hovered around her. The final one, the leader obviously, was very odd in that he seemed to be chronically hunched over like an animal. His head was wrapped up like a mummy, leaving only his left eye to see. On his back was an ornament that could only be compared to a fluffy white fur pelt strapped onto his back. Combine these choices of attire with his incredibly long-sleeved shirt, and he was exceedingly unusual to say the least. However unlike the others, who gave off the feeling of power and confidence, his aura was more reserved and seemed to be much colder and far crueler than theirs. Well, well, well the one with the spiked hair and the arrogant smirk said, I'd say we got lucky kin. Lucky nothing the girl said with an equally arrogant grin, we've hit the jackpot Zaku. Agreed the bandage one said, not only have we found a Chihasasuke, but also one of the Hyuga clan, Hirachimaru Sama would be pleased. The one called Zaku snorted, pleased. Dosu, with what we're going to deliver I think this'll finally give us that one last push to be down and don't be overconfident Dosu said with a reprimanding tone, as he took one step toward the now on guard pair, we must first inquire Chihasan. Will you come with us to Arachimarusama peacefully? Sasuke sneered and charged Chakra into his eyes to fuel his Sharingan, if there's one thing I want to do willingly in Odo, it would be to skin the snake. Dosu chuckled and spoke darkly, well then I suppose that would make our jobs a bit harder. Zaku laughed as he uncrossed his arms and a small blast compressed air shot from his vents in a wasteful but overall impressive display, and a lot more fun. Indosu said, his left hand flowing from his sleeve and coming out to grasp the hem of his right sleeve, you can take the Hyuga correctly Kin scoffed as she reached down into her hip pouch, of course. Long range attacks are the weakness of Jukin. She'll be down for the count and there, Odo has the Byakugan for sale to Kumo or maybe just some experimentation. Kin looked to Hinata for a reaction, expecting hatred, fear, doubt, any sort of emotion on the heiress's face. The only look she received was one completely devoid of emotion, it unnerved her to see that expression on a living person. I'm getting tired of listening to you, Talk Sasuke growled as he threw a triad of kunai at the trio of Odonin, their bodies vanishing before they could be impaled by the specialized knives. Sasuke cast a blood-red glance over his shoulder to Hinata who gave an empty nod, vanishing in a blur before his eyes. Sasuke heaved a small sigh as he turned his head back to face forward, closing his eyes, he forced his mind and body to calm down, so he could properly think. Sasuke's eyes opened wide, and he barely dodged to the side, evading a powerful blast of air that could have easily crushed him. The mission is to take him alive Zaku yelled, and obviously enraged Dosu from whatever cover he used. Wherever he had hidden he was capable enough to mask his location by causing his voice to sound from many different places at once. Yeah Zaku muttered as he materialized before Sasuke with his palms spread wide, but just barely counts too. Anada instantly activated her clan's Dejutsu, the Byakugan, to scout the area and search for that Kinoichi kin. Out of the very corner of her vision she saw aimed almost directly at her blind spot. She was lucky enough to spot the small needle and quickly dodged to the side, extending her vision searching for any sign of the throwing ninja. She finally found an image of Kin and took off in her direction, her unrelenting Byakugan eyes focused solely on her opponent. Anata landed not too far away from Kin, not completely sure about Kin's Tejutsu abilities, so she decided to keep a medium-length distance from her just in case. Kin smirked and said, for having the Byakugan eyes you're pretty blind. Hanada was mildly confused until she heard a small ding sound. Instantly she felt queasy and she fell to her knees, watching with activated by Akigan as Kin and much of the surrounding forest split several times over turning her once feared clan into a handicap. She shut off the chakra to her eyes, but even with normal vision Kin had clones, all of them giving off that smug grin. 
Seeing double, or maybe quadruple kin said as she and all of her clones simultaneously took out several da. But this is only the beginning, Hayuga kin said with a bitter laugh. I wouldn't be surprised if your body will eventually be unable to move or better yet you'll go completely deaf. Hinata winced in pain, but her face did not betray any emotion, her silence allowing her to think while kin chattered on. Anada gulped down whatever food had decided to show itself a second time to her esophagus and pushed chakra into her eyes once more, extending her vision in an attempt to locate those devious bells. It was only a single second, but she almost couldn't handle it. The multitude of images and crisscrossing patterns called for a large headache and more than enough nausea to rise from within her. Still she failed to see the bells as she deactivated her dejutsu and observed as the multiple kins threw their multitudes of dot. Anada made a sudden decision and dodged to the left, feeling, but only one skim her jacket she nearly let out a sigh of relief, but that was interrupted by the sound of the bell. You got lucky Hayuga kin said, as from her pouch came Nada but a kunai, this time I will finish it. Hinata frantically pushed chakra into her eyes again, feeling sickened at the vision, but finally catching a glimpse of the bells, right in the center of her blind spot, had she been only one small leap to the right. Of course knowing this didn't make it easy, the number of bells tied to the multiple was insane, and taking into account that kin and her clones were rushing at her with amazing speed and power, it only made her sicker. Hinata deactivated her clans just before she emptied her stomach, welcomed back into true vision by the side of the kins taking a running start for her with a kunai. Hinata's eyes snapped shut and she did the only thing that came to her mind. She spun. It was far too late for Kin to retract her attack, mid-flight towards the Hyuga Eris was sort of a bad time to change attack plans. Her entire body was slammed against the swirling shield of chakra, its winds and power cutting into her skin and causing terrible chakra burns all over the front of her body. She flew away from the power, but amazingly she quickly flipped in the air, landing on her feet on a tree several yards away with a smirk. Wow Kin said, clutching the broken strings of her bell, you not only hit me with the Hayuga's ultimate shield, but you also broke my bells. I would say that hurts, but well you'll find out. Hinata, her vision clearing as the bells ringing became no more, activated her by Akigan to find a very unfavorable sight. Hin stood there with a grin on her face as the burns and slashes that once covered her body, in essence, went up in smoke. A low hiss came from her various wounds as they closed, lowering what could have been a knockout blow to a mere inconvenient pain. Hin smirked and this time took out more of her deadly, I think we'll do this from farther away from now on. Hinata, for the first time since the little fight began, glared at the black-haired Kinoichi. Kin was a bit taken aback by the stare the girl gave her, it was almost deadly in itself. This one sight was what stopped her from jumping away as Hinata said not a word, but calmly slid into the stance of Jukin fighting style. Kin smirked in superiority, you think you'll get me over there? Good luck weak little Hayuga princess. I doubt you could even hit me. It was a blur of movement, not even spanning a second. Hinata vanished and reappeared before Kin, pulling her palm back and slamming it into Kin's stomach, throwing her into the tree trunk with a significant force. Hinata's body shook with uncharacteristic rage and before unknown power, as she stood with her head down and palm facing the injured Kinoichi. Hinata raised her head revealing a growing killer glare, goodbye. Kin was watching through squinted eyelids as Hinata charged with a palm full of deadly Jukin chakra. Sasuke dodged for the thousandth time, the freak with the arm pressure cannons built into his arms was held to face, but the opponent with the sound amplifier on his arm was also wearing his nerves paper thing. He was lucky enough not to be hit often with the sound vibrations, they only hit his inner ear once, and after a brief spout of nausea and quick vomiting, he placed a fair amount of distance between himself and the mummy. Despite the fact that this distance nullified the inner ear vibrations the air slicer took away what little advantage that was. Sasuke was almost on constant defense from the air pressure blasts and waves of sound, he was so dependent on defense at this moment that he didn't have the time to plan a successful offense. The only he had time for were his fireballs, and even those only gave him a few moments extra pause time before he was back on defense. Dosu's Aku muttered angrily as he fired another air pressure blast in Sasuke's general direction, why can't we kill this weak Ichiha? Sasuke felt a deep stab at his pride, but Dosu spoke, because Orochimaru-sama needs him alive Zaku, remember that. Zaku grunted angrily, yeah, yeah, it's just I'm bored out of my mind. Sasuke Sharingan was spinning in his rage at the accusations of being a weakling, the taunts proving him not to be any stronger than them. He was about to produce another ball of flame, but he suddenly felt a pulsation inside of his heart, tightening on his pumping organ before releasing, causing him to feel recovered and much stronger. He was completely confused at the feeling within, but decided to not look a gift horse in the mouth and slide his hands into quick seals, whatever this boost in power was he didn't know if it was temporary, so he planned to finish this now. Sasuke grinned maliciously at the two Odo ninja, and in a flash he pressed his fingers to his lips, letting loose a rain of medium-sized fireballs onto the Odo shinobi. 
Zaku looked the projectiles over, then produced a cocky grin, he tries this ten times, and yet he doesn't learn. He held up his air vent hands and charged a burst of air long before Dosu analyzed the situation and was able to warn Zaku. The spheres of flame were met halfway by twin gusts of highly compressed air, and the blink of an eye they were no more however, in the process of forming the fireballs, Sasuke had slipped innumerable amounts of shuriken and a few kunai into them. Zaku's eyes snapped open, and he quickly guarded with his arms, the shuriken merely grazed his form, but the kunai lodged into his arms and legs, cutting him straight to the bone. Zaku bit back the hiss of pain and quickly threw his arms to the side, ridding them of the kunai. He turned his gaze back to Sasuke as the once weak Ichiha had charged him, a kunai in his hand and an unruly red chakra surging around him. Zaku was frozen at the sight, his breath quickened, and he relied on basic instinct as Sasuke's foot rose up and flew to the side of his head. His arm shot up to guard, but due to injuries he wasn't swift enough, he was kicked clean out of the clearing, leaving only Dosu who now rushed to recovering Ichiha. Sasu turned on a dime and was off in a flash, planting his foot into Dog's chest, sending the bandage-covered shinobi into a nearby tree. It was a blur of movement as Sasu pulled three large shuriken from his pouch and launched them at Dosu, each of them missing him by a mile. Dosu felt he was lucky until the shuriken came around again, circling him and the tree several times before implanting themselves in the hardwood of the plant. At this point he knew he was tied to the tree with wire, the only thing he could do was watch as the crimson chakra engulfed Sasuke formed numerous hand seals with the wires grasped tightly in his teeth. Sasuke took a great breath, and from the exhale came a massive streak of ruby red fire, flowing directly down to wire's guiding line. The Nada's hand was suspended inches from Kin's chest, directly over her heart, just far away enough for the Jukin chakra spike to have no effect at all. The entire forest was silent until it was broken by Kin's voice as she exclaimed, Nobu Sama Naruto, smirked as he stood to the side of the two, holding Hinata's wrist, so she was unable to connect with Kin's chest, in her most likely deadly Jukin strike. Naruto chuckled and produced a small smile, ah Kin-chan it's been so long. We must see one another more often. Hinata blinked in confusion, looking between Kin's purely star-struck look to Naruto's smirk and closed crimson eye. Naruto turned to her with a small smile, that was very good Hinata-san. I didn't expect you to attack so fiercely. In fact I had no idea that you could move that fast in your family's Jukin style. Hinata could only stare in confusion until Naruto let her wrist go so he could turn to Kin, so Kin-chan I see it is working great for you, along with Dosu-san and Zaku-san. Kin nodded quickly and with a wide smile, we are nearing Jown in status Nobu-sama, and Orochimaru-san is none the wiser either. Good, good Naruto said before he turned and approached the young Hyuga heiress, shaking her shoulder, waking her from a semi-stupefied state. Hinata-san, we must go to gather Ichiha-san. His test is nearing the end as we speak. Hinata nodded dumbly as she and the rest were engulfed in a scarlet flame. Osu let out a sigh of relief as the wire that held him tightly unexpectedly went lax, and the crimson inferno that was on a direct path for his life, sprayed off into the air, harmlessly dissipating in a marvelous mist of red flames. Oh thank the gods, Nobusama Dosu said with an excited voice as Naruto came into view, on one side of him was Kin, and on the other was the Hayuga. Naruto chuckled as he looked Dosu over, Dosu, how pleasant seeing you at least what I can. Sasuke was just about to cuss Naruto out for talking to the enemy, until he felt whatever power had manifested itself in him, give out leaving him exhausted and causing him to be grounded by his own physical weight. Naruto gave a casual glance over his shoulder and then turned to Dosu, so it manifested itself already Dosu, nodded and spoke with slight amazement and to some extent confusion, yes Nobusama. It was quite an impressive spike also, the first growth was larger than any of us have had. Naruto grinned wide as he strode over to the fallen body of Sasuke with Hinata close in tow. Well that is a pleasant surprise Naruto said with a grin as he placed Sasuke back to the trunk with a sturdy tree for sitting support, I knew I made the right decision choosing him and Hinata send out Naruto, grinned at Sasuke's fatigued face, the Sharingan gradually deactivating, but he somehow held that burning look of defiance and strength in his coal black eyes. Nobusama Dosu voiced, earning Naruto's focus on Kin and Dosu's kneeling forms, is there anything we can do for you? Naruto thought for a moment before he spoke with an older than he should know tone, yes. I need for you to say nothing of this beyond that you were ambushed by some Kanoha ninja who were also searching for the Ichiha. You obliterated every one of them and disposed of the bodies accordingly. Continue in Arachimaru's service, gather whatever information you can and deliver it in the way you have been instructed. That is all, dismiss. Yes, Nobu sama, give Gara sama our best regards, Dosu said, both of them vanishing in a blur, most likely to gather up their teammate and explain to him the details of what had happened. The ten silence occupied the space which had once held the two Odo ninja. 
Hinata and Sasuke were on guard and on edge, they didn't know the details of what just happened, but if the words were any clue in the least, then it meant their sensei was keeping some very big secrets from them. Hinata asked silent questions with her eyes, not able to voice her queries to the obviously powerful being before her, apparently Sasuke had no such troubles. Whose side Sasuke grumbled angrily with as much energy as he could muster, are you on? That ten silence answered his question for a while, Naruto keeping quiet as he held his back to them. Sasuke opened his mouth to speak again, but Naruto sighed, silencing Sasuke with the soft exhalation of breath. He then began speaking using a tone in his voice that they recognized as being something used only by the most experienced of ninja, an accent of age and wisdom, I have decided that there will be no more secrets that I will keep from you. There will be no confusion as to who your sensei truly is, and what exactly he is capable of. To begin, my name is Kuajeki Nobu and I am Kitsune. But those words spoken he was enveloped in a cloud of raven black and bloody crimson smoke. 